Ayan. So, okay. Good afternoon to each and everyone. And alam ko na all of our teachers right now is very busy, lalo na uh, marami pa rin tayong ginagawa kahit ano, di ba? Kahit kakatapos lang ng, ng, ng school year, ganyan. Marami pa rin tayong responsibilities and everything. And I understand. And that is why we are recording this, actually, yan, for those who cannot attend the live session. Ayan. So, Uh, again, I am Arvin. Uh, I am Coach Arvin and I am an agriculture graduate. And something that I have learned from our past session is that ang dami talagang uh, questions sa LET na sobrang related. Although, ano siya, in a general aspect, uh, you can see this and you can answer these questions that we will be tackling. Pero... Uh, it is a very good point of view. Actually, meron ding isang participant last last session na sinabi sa akin na yung mga dire-discuss ko daw is uh, kita rin daw niya sa mga reviewers niya. So, that will really help you most especially yung sa grafting, ganyan. Ayun nga pala, konting ano lang, konting uh, ano tawag dito? Uh, recap. <laughs> last uh, Session, we talked about crop science. Actually, I strategize to divide each session according to the field para mas madali nating ma- makita kung itong topic na to, dito ba to sa crop science, dito ba to sa crop protection, dito ba to sa uh, animal science, or dito ba to sa fisheries, dito ba to sa soil science, ganun. And perhaps I think this will be a great advantage for you as a taker kasi Karaniwan ng mga nagre-review for AFA, anong tawag dito? Kinukuha nila as a whole. So in a general aspect, tasalo-halo. So there are tendencies na, na yung mga concepts ay mapag ay mapag-combine-combine nila ganyan. Although meron na mga integration. Pero uh, it is still important for us to distinguish the differences or kung saan ba ang COP ang isang situation na question sa inyong examination. So yun, just a reminder for our rules, most especially for those who uh, have uh, just uh, enrolled, uh, yung, nag, yung nag-avail ganyan. So uh, first is no screen or video recording. Ayan. We, are, we will be providing this recording ngayon na nangyayari. <laughs> we, we will be providing this one. Also, uh, sa screenshots, bawal din kasi We encourage you to take note. Actually, I am also a note taker. Wow. I'm also a note taker. And I found it really effective kasi, anong tawag dito? Habang sinusulat mo, nare-retain mo rin yung information na na inaano sa'yo. Na uh, tawag dito, bibigay sa'yo. Ganun. So, that is called tactile learning. Wow. <laughs> Merong pa segue ng mga tips, no? Ayan. So, All throughout our lecture, I will also give some tips uh, in a specific na anong tawag dito? In a specific situation sa ating mga questions. Yeah. So, ayun. We highly encourage you to take note and know the definitions of every term. Kasi later I will be discussing the choices even. Ayan. Tapos, Ayon, uh, we highly encourage everyone to stay on mute kapag d- during the lectures. And I will be reminding this then to others. Kasi we, we, would, uh, we won't like us to be a distraction then to others. Most especially kapag pinanood nila itong recording, di ba? So, yeah. Yeah, so I think that's it. Uh, this session, I will be discussing uh, 75 questions on crop protection and also i have ano pala bonus questions because i reviewed the recording for the last session and nag may, may parang items na na skip hindi ko alam kung paano nangyari pero i think that's items 51 to 60 i will also be discussing that kasi i think uh, we have more time ngayon kasi last session nagsasagot tayo sa chat box, di ba? So, ngayon, since you are all, at least all, uh, all students right now are, will be watching using the recording, this will be a faster discussion. So, 
again, I am also a patronizer of the Pomodoro Technique. So I will be uh, giving us in between breaks. Ayan, for us. Kasi hindi ako naniniwala na kapag dire-direcho, ay, anong tawag dito? Ay okay siya. <laughs> Parang we all need rest. And I want to give you as well that five minutes of rest para i-digest yung mga items that we have already tackled. Ayan. So, ayan. It's already... Uh, anong oras na ba? <laughs> 20 minutes na. So, ayan. Let's go. And let us start with this. Again, this is on crop protection. ha. So, this will deal with three branches, actually. Uh, we, we have weed science, which is weeds. <laughs> Uh, ano ba mga example ng weeds? Um, alam niyo yung mga maliliit na mga flowers, ganyan, na kita niyo lang kung saan-saan, those are weeds. And ano nga ba ang definition ng weeds? Ang weeds in a crop, prote- uh, in a crop production context, kapag sinabi nating weeds, ito ay yung mga bagay, mga bagay, yung mga halaman na hindi dapat nandoon. For example, you have a cornfield. Kapag sa cornfield mo, meron dong tumubong isang damo na ayaw mong nandun. That is considered as a weed. Ngayon, you may be asking, paano kapag sa isang cornfield, merong tumubo na rose? Merong tumubong rose. Eh, rose yun, di ba? Sobrang ganda nun. Ganyan. Well, that rose is also considered as a weed. Kasi hindi naman natin objective sa isang farm or sa isang, uh, sa isang field na mag-grow ng rose. At, at since dahil wala siya doon, ay, na, nandun siya pero dapat wala siya doon, that rose is considered as a weed. So I hope that definition of the weed is clear sa inyo. Basta unwanted plant species na nasa isang lugar, ayun ay weeds. So next field, so we have weed science, we also have plant pathology. Plant pathology is I've noticed then sa mga uh, questionnaires of the past uh, licensure ng, uh, for AFA, I more focused on pests. Mas on pests, on plant pathology. Specifically yung mga diseases. Ano yung mga symptoms na, na ganito yung sakit ng inyong plants. Yung mga ganun na questions. So, marami tayong mamimit na ganun as we progress in this lecture. So, plant pathology deals with the diseases. And lastly, entomology. Entomology deals with the insects. Ayan. So, ano yung mga insect pests? For example, uh, beetle. Yung rice beetle, di ba sa mga, ano, sa mga tawag dito, bigas natin, minsan may mga gumagapang doon na mga maliliit na uh, beetle. That is considered as a pest as well. Pero in the post-harvest na siya na stage. In the field setup, we can consider caterpillars, yung mga yan. But even yung mga grasshoppers, leaf hop leaf hoppers yung mga yan those are also examples of insect pests so in this lecture we will be diving deeper on those concepts of weed science plant pathology and entomology so yun let us start by answering this question so dati di ba parang ano <laughs> we have a chat box pero sige sir ano sir Carson, you can still answer there if you want to ano Sige. Para meron na rin, ano review talaga. You can send your answer in the chat box. I will give you at least, you know, five seconds. <laughs> Kasi ano lang naman. Okay. So, yeah. So, for, for the first item, we have a harmful alteration of the normal physiological and biochemical development of a plant that is supposed to be plant. Plant plant. So, A, insects, B, disease, C, damage, or letter D, parasite. So, ayan.
Okay. So yes, the correct answer is letter B, which is disease. So it is a harmful alteration. The keyword here is alteration. Alteration means you know, changes. Harmful. Harmful is also and dangerous now. So it means hindi siya normal. Of the normal physiological and biochemical development of a plant. So bakit hindi insects, bakit hindi damage, bakit hindi parasite? So first, let us dig deeper on the terms bio physiological and biochemical. When we say physiological, it pertains to the normal functions ng mga parts ng isang halaman. Uh, this could be the way that the plants process yung water, yung nutrients, yung mga yun. So they are performing their physiological processes if all of those things are normal. And also yung, yung parts, which means you have good leaves, you have good uh, stem, okay lahat. That pertains to, physio to good physiological structure, stay sure as well. Next is biochemical. So sa biochemical naman, it pertains to the chemical processes. What are, what are these chemical processes that happens in your plant? These are uh, photosynthesis, and photosynthesis, cellular respiration, and yung mga yan. Actually, I, sige, I will discuss more on this ngayon na. Yeah. So photosynthesis, as we know, is the food-making process of plants. So this is an example of a physiological process. Ang photosynthesis, kailangan niya ng carbon dioxide plus water, then with light, ayan, and energy, they will produce oxygen and sugar. Let's say carbohydrates. Ayan. Carbohydrates. Yeah. So this is the process of photosynthesis. Yung carbohydrates, ito yung food. Kaya siya sinabing food making process because you are producing this uh, para ipower yung mga processes ng halaman. So, you know, that is one of the bio biological processes in plants. Okay. So, Sabi doon, physiological and biochemical development of a plant. Of a plant. So disease, ito actually yung, uh, disease is, can also be called as plant pathogen. Yeah. Yan actually yun. So ang insects naman kasi, they can do damage. Insects can do damage. Damage. Ayan. Pero hindi siya directly or hindi niya hina, ina alter directly yung physiological and biochemical processes. Same through with parasite. So disease is the, very, is the closest and the best answer for this. So yeah. Later, we will see a lot of disease. I will be showing you pictures of the different diseases in plants. Tapos ayun, doon natin makikita kung paano na-alter ang photosynthesis. Kung paano... Uh, naapektuhan ng mga diseases ang ating halaman. So, yun. Next. Yan. Let's go with number two. The science which deals with the nature, causes, and management of plant diseases. Yan. So, what is the science which deals with the nature, causes, and management of plant diseases? A- Crop science, B, agronomy, C, plant pathology, or letter D, horticulture. So yes, the answer is plant pathology. So from our discussion a while back, plant pathology I already mentioned in, na ang diseases can also be called as plant pathogen. So plant pathology is the science that deals with the nature causes management of plant diseases. So nature, kapag sinabing nature, paano siya 
nag-grow at saka nagre-reproduce. Causes, ano ang mga factors na nagli-lead sa uh, reproduction ng isang plant disease? And management, paano natin aaksyonan yung mga yun? So uh, actually, this will be tackled mamaya sa mga late na mga items natin. So yes, it's plant pathology. Oh, here, number three, which statement on the effective use, which statement, which of the following statement on, on the effective use of protective fungicide is true? A, use too little fungicide at the right time and at the right way. B, use too much fungicide at the right time and at the right way. C, use the exact amount of fungicide at the right time and the right way. Or letter D, use exact amount of fungicide at any time at any way. So yes, the answer for here is letter C. Actually, meron mga, I've met a lot of questions like this na sobrang obvious rin na mga answer and do not overthink. If there is something na ano, if there is something that I've learned from one of my teachers back then is to not overthink. Na, ano yun sabi niya? The, your first instinct is the best. <laughs> Parang ganun. So, minsan kasi we overthink statements like this. Most especially, hala, na ako overwhelmed. Sobrang haba nung ano, nung mga tao dito, choices, ganyan. So, our tendency is to overthink. And here, you can just look at the keywords. For example, exact, right, and right. So, exact amount of fungicide at the right time, at the right way. So, bakit bawal or bakit hindi ideal na gumamit ng uh, less or too much? It's because they can even cause it's either kapag less kapag less na fungicide, it's either it will not be too effective for controlling the disease that you are acting upon. And if it is too much naman, it can even damage your plants. It can even damage your plants. So the key in uh, pest management, the key there is really using the exact amount. And actually, there are a lot of computations that you can do about this, how to compute the active ingredient and everything. But I've uh, scanned through the questions. Wala namang ganong kalalim for let afa diba <laughs> feel ko sa ano yon sa amin yon sa licensure for agriculture pero siguro when we are this when we will be discussing the antal dito integration na ng lahat ng concepts perhaps i can discuss one item on that ayun pero ayan again exact amount of fungicide at the right time and at the right way wait lang ayun pa pala So right time, meron kasing mga suggested dyan na mga oras. Anong oras ba? Uh, kailangan ba sobrang araw or kailangan sakto lang yung araw? Kasi even the environmental factors, for example, humidity, ano pa ba? Humidity, temperature, yung mga yan, it can also affect the absorption of the fungicide. And in the right way, ano ba to? Uh, biolog- uh, spray ba siya? or manual control, yung mga ganon. So, you need to also look at those aspects. Paano siya dapat ila- ilalagay? Ang mga pesticides, y- y- yung mga fungicides, lahat. Ano yung pinakamagandang control? Mamaya, meron tayong makikita ang mga different ways kung paano mag-control ng pests. Marami yan. So, Mamaya tingnan natin. <laughs> Next. Ayan. Okay. Let's do number four. Which plant grows on another plant and are not parasitic? They usually derive physical support from the host and obtain nourishment from the air and other sources. A. Halophytes. P. Epiphytes. C. Lithophytes. Or letter D. Meso fights. Yes, uh, the answer here is letter B, which is epiphytes. So here are 
the different discussion on kung ano-ano nga ba itong mga to. Kapag sinabi natin halo fights, these are salt-tolerant na plants. Which means they can grow well under saline conditions. Under saline conditions. So kahit maraming salt dun sa water mo, they can grow well. An example of this ay mangrove. Uh, yung sa mangrove kasi, they grow well in, anong tawag dito? Yung salt water talaga. I've been to through a, anong tawag dito? Mangrove farm sa Dagupan. I'm from Pangasinan pala kasi, kasi originally pala. So, I've worked with BFAR sa Dagupan and meron sila doon mangrove, ano, mangrove farm. And ang ganda doon, sobrang presko, sobrang lapit din talaga. In, uh, ano na siya? Dagat na talaga siya. Ganun. So, that's, a, that's an example of halo fight. Next, is lithophytes. Ang lithophytes naman, these are plants that grows on rocks. For example, meron mga ilang uh, species ng orchids na nag-grow sa rocks. Pero hindi naman sa mismong batutubo. Parang sa mga ganon, sa mga edges. At saka sa mga cracks. Ayan. Doon sila nag-grow. Yung mga lithophytes, they can survive under those conditions. And yung mesophytes naman, these are plants that need little water. An example of this is corn. Uh, kaya yung irrigation natin sa corn is not as intensive as what we do in rice. Right? Sa rice, we can... Uh, ano tawag dito? We can... Ano yung tawag dito? Flood them. We can flood them in water. Merong ganong procedure sa rice. Pero in corn, we cannot actually do that because they can survive even with little water. So, and ito pala yung mga example ng mga epiphytes. Ayan. Moss and ferns. So, ito yung mga tumutubo sa uh, kasama ng other plants. Actually, ito ay what is this relationship called? Di ba? Meron din yung tawag. Ang tawag dyan is commensalism. Commensalism is the ecological relationship between an organism na nag stay sa isang organism without harming it. Ayan. So, ayan. Next. Actually, this is a legal na question pala. So, ayan. Number five. Which time of insects' life goes through the four stages of development. A, complete metamorphosis. B, perfect metamorphosis. C, incomplete metamorphosis. Or letter D, imperfect metamorphosis. Which time of insects' life goes through the four stages of development? So yes, the answer is letter A. So far, perfect is recursive. Na. <laughs> so, uh, The answer is letter A, complete metamorphosis. Una na sa lahat, some choices are made to confuse you. Ito na yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina na maganda na inaaral natin, maganda na inaaral natin ito ng hiwa-hiwalay. Kasi ito, yan ay nasa aspeto ng plant breeding. Itong complete flower, perfect flower. Incomplete flower, imperfect flower. Pero dito, the question is talking about insects. Diba? So it's very helpful that we study them on, anong tawag dito? We study them in a different days. Ganon. <laughs> we study them according to their categories. Kasi ito, they are talking about insects. And if you know about insects, they do not have this. So pangulo lang yan. Yung perfect, tas yung imperfect. Because those terms, are terms that we use in plant breeding. Perfect flower or tama ba? Oh, tama. Perfect flower, imperfect flower, incomplete flower, complete flower. Ayan. So, dito sa insect, ang pwede na dito is complete or incomplete. And the question states that which type of insects 
uh, life goes through the four stages of development, four stages of development, and that is complete metamorphosis. Uh, complete metamorphosis. So ito, just a quick discussion of the complete metamorphosis. We have first yung eggs, ayan yung first stage nila, then larva, pupa, and the insect. So complete metamorphosis uh, happens in butterflies. Yung mga yan. Eggs, larva, pupa, and insect. So those are the four stages of development. Ayan. Next. Here. Number seven. To avoid snail infestation, farmers can pick snails and feed them to blank in the field. Yeah. So this is somehow an integration question. Na rin. To avoid snail infestation, farmers can pick snails and feed them and feed them to blank in the field. A, fish, B, ducks, C, rats, or letter D, chickens. The answer here is quite obvious, actually. Alin sa mga yan? <laughs> ang, ang answer, ay, ang ano dito is, alin sa mga yan, ang kasha, sa bunganga nila yung snail. Ayan, di ba? So the answer here is, actually, wala, wala explanation kasi nga obvious, di ba? Is ducks. Para, lumakas ba yung microphone ko or what? Ayan. Ang answer dito ay ducks. Kasi sa fish, hindi naman nila kayang kainin yung, anong tawag dito? Yung snail. So, yung rats and chickens are also equis kasi hindi rin nila <laughs> ipasok sa buhangan nila yung snail. So, ducks is the best answer. And this is actually being done in rice farms. Ayan. Yung sa mga integrated farms natin na merong uh, rice tas sa may tabi nila merong uh, anong tawag dito? Poultry area, ganon. So, this is actually being done ng mga farmers sa mga ganong areas. Okay, the next question. Ayan. Here. Which caterpillar roll a leaf into a tube and feed within the, within the tied leaves? So, A, leaf miner, B, leaf folder, C, leaf destroyers, or letter D, leaf hoppers. Ayan. So the answer for this is letter D, which is leaf folders. The keyword here is roll. Roll a leaf. Actually, meron talagang leaf miner, meron talagang leaf hoppers, leaf destroyers ay panggulo lang dyan. So ang leaf folders, they roll uh, yung mga leaf natin. Kapag ito ay karaniwan nangyayari rin sa rice meron to sa rice meron din to sa tomato yung mga yan so ito yung karaniwang nag infest sa mga gardens natin so yung mga leaf folder okay. actually ito talaga yung pinakalaban sa garden eh kasi mas ako, mas kay ako dati ang dami kong ano ano tawag dito ang dami kong mga ganito dun sa indoor garden ko ay indoor sa outdoor garden ko last year Back in Pangasinan. Okay, next. Number nine. How do we control scale insects on plant leaves? All are advised. Lahat daw ng mga nasa baba advice except uh, alin dyan? A. Pick off in infected leaves and burn them. B. Clean off insects from leaves with cotton ball soak in alcohol. Letter C. Spray leaves with water and alcohol. Or letter D. Spray water with salt on infected leaves. So okay, I'll wait for your answer. Ah, yeah. So the correct answer is letter D. Yes. Apply water with salt on infected leaves. In controlling scale insects, in controlling scale insects, one of the most effective way I maglagay ng alcohol. This could be isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol, yung mga yan. The difference lang between the choices, actually, kita mo na yun sa choices pa lang. Kasi we are looking for
we are looking for anong tawag dito except so alin dito yung hindi kasali so dahil yung number two, uh, letter B at letter C ay meron na yes yes <laughs> pwede siya in controlling insects lang ha oo ayan so anong tawag dito itong dahil meron na silang alcohol anong tawag dito tama na tong dalawa Your next letter A is one of the most effective way then. Kapag sobrang damage na ng mga halaman natin. Kunwari, may portion na sobrang ano na, sobrang lantana o kaya ano ba, marami ng insekto. One of the pinaka last na option na talaga is to burn them. Pick off infected leaves and burn them. Ayun na talaga yung pinaka ano. Yung salt kasi it is It can control some pests, pero not scale insects. Ayan. Ayun. So, yeah, ayun pala yung, yung question na pwede pala ang, ang alcohol sa leaves. Actually, yes, in controlling insects nga. Ayan. Ilang percent ng alcohol ang advisable? The best, ito, bakit, <laughs> bakit lahat ng, halos lahat ng mga nasa grocery store, side ano lang? Wait na. Naka-25 minutes na tayo. Sige. Tatapusin ko lang ito. Uh, bakit lahat ng... Uh, lahat, halos lahat ng mga nasa grocery stores sa alcohol is 70%. Wow. <laughs> bakit ganon? Kasi, anong tawag dito? Ito rin yung advisable na percentage. Kasi, uh, ang kailangan for microorganisms para ano dito? Ma-lessen yung population nila is first is effectivity effectivity ng aspect ng aspect ng ng, ng material na gagamitin which is alcohol and next is contact time kapag 40% na alcohol mas maraming tubig yun di ba kapag 40% lang na alcohol mas matagal siya magi stay sa kamay you can test this this actually kapag kuha kayo ng 40% na rubbing alcohol tapos 70% yung 40%, mas matagal siya sa, sa kamay mo. At mas marami siyang tubig, ganun. So, it is not that advice when controlling this, ano. And even in simple dishwashing, eh, in dishwashing, in simple washing of your hands, ayan. Ano tawag dito? Kasi, mas, yung water ay mas marami kumpara dun sa mismo agent. So, in terms of ano ang tawag dito? E- effectivity. Ayun. Uh, hindi siya ganun ka-effective. Unlike kapag 70%. Kapag 70% naman, hindi, i-discuss muna natin. So, 40% ganun siya. Hindi masyadong effective kasi mas maunti yung agent. Sabihin natin, ba tayo hindi gumagamit ng 100% na lang na, na ethyl alcohol? ba? Diba? Kasi, yes, sobrang effective niya, pero walang contact time hindi siya magi-stay sa kamay mo kasi magi evaporate siya tama si ano si Sir uh, Carson sabi niya mas ma- pag mas maraming percent mas ma- mas mabilis matuyo kasi ang alcohol is very volatile they can evaporate in just a matter of seconds so kapag sobrang taas ng percentage ng alcohol mas madali siya mag evaporate so kapag 70% which is nasa gitna lang siya it is the perfect Uh, combination kumbaga to access yung contact time at saka yung effectivity ng disinfectant. Ayun. So I hope na <laughs> nag nagkaroon pa ng random ano no, random discussion. Ayun, I hope na it helped you. So before we continue, let's have a five minute break. Ayan. Uh, for us to digest yung mga nangyari. Perhaps you can look at your notes, tignan nyo kung or ano kahit kahit huwag na kayo tumingin sa notes nyo or what, magliwali ko lang kayo ganyan. CR break, kain, and everything. So, again, let's have a five-minute break.
All right. I hope na nakapag ano kayo, nakapag chill <laughs> sa ating uh, five minute break. Ayan. So, let us continue. Ayan. So, number 10, uh, which pest is caused, ito na, di ba kanina sabi ko mag magda-dive deeper tayo sa mga uh, diseases sa halaman. So, this is it. Uh, I encourage you to take note of this kasi yung mga nasa choices dito, these are the common uh, diseases na pinaka lumalabas din sa mga let, sa mga dating let. Ganyan. So, let's go. Which pest is caused by a fungi that attack the basal parts of the plant causing yellowing and drying of leaves. So, any, ano? <laughs> All right. So, here, the correct answer for this item is letter A, which is circospora leaf a spot. You can actually ano tawag dito? Answer this question through elimination. Let's try. Sabi dito, i-highlight natin ang um, causing yellowing and drying of leaves. So dun pa lang, kita na natin na ang problema ay nasa leaves. So, because of that, cancelled na ang ang um, actually this is fosarium bulb rot x na yan kasi ang hinahanap natin ay sakit sa leaf okay so next sabi niya which pest is caused by a fungi fungi the next question that you would be answering is is trip a fungi the next one is is mite a fungi these two here are insects and bugs. Trip is an insect. Yan, yung mite naman, it is a bug na, na nag infest ng mga kahoy. Ayan. So, dito pa lang, in cancellation at elimination, you can answer circles for the leaf spot. And that is actually uh, one of the most common uh, fungal diseases. You can get circospora in coffee trees. Meron ding circospora leaf spot in okra. Yung mga yan. So, karaniwan ang mga spots ay cause ng fungi. Ayun. So, remember that. Ka karaniwan. Mamaya, we will be meeting more terms. Kung ano yung mga nagkukos ng ganito, Yun pong bacteria, ano yung kinokos niya? Kapag virus, ano ba yung mga kinokos niya, mga sakit? Mga we will be answering more of that. So this is uh, one of the simplest question that you can answer through elimination. So that is one of the tips that I can give to you is to really analyze and look at context clues dun sa question pa lang. Kasi kapag dun sa question pa lang, alam na natin na ah, ito leaves daw. So itong letter B, wala na to kasi bulb siya eh. Diba? So... This also entails knowing the ano yung dito? common parts of your plant. Ano ba yung bulbs? Ano ba yung leaf? Ano ba yung kapag sinabi natin stem? Yung mga ganon. So branches. Parehas ba ang branches at stem? Ano yung mga yun? So have a review ng mga main parts ng plants. Kasi it can even help you sa pag-answer ng mga complex question like this. So let's move to the next item. Ayan. Okay, so what is what is considered as the most destructive group of insect pests found in Asia that causes low rise yields? Ayan. So here we have the different terms rice blast, rice cankers, rice turn borers. The rice blight. So these these are all technical terms, right? But you can associate it with the different microorganisms. Okay. The correct answer here is letter C, which is stern. Actually, I think that's stem borers. Stem borers. 
Oke. Okay. Itu. Yeah. Ang question is on insect pests. Destructive group of insect pests. When we say blast, ito ay karan, eh, ito ay karaniwang kinokos ng fungi, fungus. So, ito yung mga kailangan nyo ano yun, uh, i-review. Fungi, bacteria, kahit general description lang. Kasi I, I think they would not be giving you, anong tawag dito? Deep questions on this kasi hindi naman sobrang ano. In, uh, insects, and the virus, and the virus. Tapos yung, ito yung mga microorganisms na to. Hindi ko na iya ano yung virus. Nematodes. Pero ang nematodes is hindi masyadong natakal sa past lets. Ayun. Fungi blast. Rice blast is caused by a fungi. Ang canker, ang canker is not existent in rice. Kasi ang canker, you will see as we go sa mga next questions, ay nangyayari sa mga stems. Sa stems nangyayari ang canker. So para siyang wound. Para siyang inano, hinate ng kutsilyo or what. Pero yun talaga ay cause ng isang bacteria. Parang gano'n. Canker also happens in citrus. Like uh, pomelo, suha. Suha, pomelo, parehas ng yun. No? Uh, ano pa ba? Ayan, pomelo. Even in oranges, lemon. There are tendencies of canker. Ayan. Mamaya, I will be showing you pictures on that. Then, rice stem borer is an insect. From the borer itself. Yung borer na term. Yeah, That is usually... Those are insects, yung mga borer. A famous example of borer is, pero this is on corn na, hindi siya rice. Eh, Asiatic. Asiatic corn borer. Asiatic corn borer. Yung, yung Asiatic corn borer, ito ang rason kung bakit tayo merong BT corn. And I've mentioned this Uh, this technology several times in my past session na ang BT corn is a very controversial topic on the topic of GMOs, topic ng uh, transgenic organisms yung mga yan. And corn border is the reason kung bakit tayo nag uh, nag-develop ng Bacillus stringensis technology. Yan, BT corn, BT talong, yung mga ganyan. It's because of this corn borer. And it is classified as an insect. So from the borer itself, I think this one can help you. Baka may mga agad itong question. Knowing the term borer, yun na agad yung insect pest. And next, yung rice blight naman is caused by a bacteria. It is caused by a bacteria. And mamaya, meron ako mga pictures ng mga ito. We will run through all of them. So again, kung kita nyo sa choices, minsan nililito lang nila kayo, bibigyan nila kayo ng iba't ibang klase ng, ng iba't ibang organism or iba't ibang sakit. Tapos, iba-iba yung ano nila, causal agent. Yan. Ang tawag sa mga, sa mga to ay causal agent. So, ano nga ba yung causal agent ng rice blast? Ano ang causal agent ng uh, rice blight? Yung mga ganun. Rice tungro virus, yung mga ganun. So, Those are things that you can review more or review further. Pwede kayong maglista ano yung mga terms na associated sa bacteria, ano yung mga terms na associated sa virus, ano yung mga terms na associated sa fungi, ano yung mga karaniwang sakit, most especially sa rice. I mentioned this as well in the, in the past session that uh, you can put a, a premium sa pagre-review on rice kasi we are a... Uh, rice producing country so perhaps some of the some or most of the questions that will be appearing sa let i about rice katulad ng mga lasem rice farm ano yung mga different uh, methods ng rice di ba so 
I suggest or I advise to have a a deeper review on the rights. Ayan. So here are here are the different plant diseases on rights. Next. Ayan. Next. Next. No. Next. <laughs> Yes. Okay, number 12. Which tiny insect lacerate plant cells and suck plant juices? Which tiny insect lacerate uh, plant cells and suck plant juices? So you can answer in the chat box. Ayan. Okay, so here we have this different effects ng mga choices natin. So, ang answer pala ay thrips. So, yan, cutworms. Cutworms from the term itself cuts yung mga dahon natin. Leaf folders, as we've discussed a while back, roll yung leaves. Ang spider mites, ang karaniwan niyang epekto ay yellowing tsaka webbing. Yung spider mites, ito yung karaniwang kita nyo sa mga ilalim ng dahon tapos maraming ano, maraming parang white stuff. That can be caused by spider mites. Whereas, yung naglalacerate ng plant cells at nagsasak ng plant juices ay thrips. So, wala akong picture na, pero I think mamaya meron. Thrips. Ayun yung ano dyan, yung answer. So, you can take note of this different effects. Ito yung mga karaniwang epekto ng mga insects na to. Ang cutworms nagkakat. Ang cutworms pala usually damages the leaves and even yung sa plants pala. From ay, plants, the ground, yung sa stem pa lang, they can already cut cut yung sa ground para ma, ma, matay na yung buong plant. Parang ganun. So, these are the different insects that we are dealing with sa crop protection. Okay. So, next, let's move to the next item. Ayan. So, which insect pest of sesame causes the leaves and young shoots to become wrinkled and deformed as a result of feeding? Ayan. So, A, leaf hopper. B, plant bug. C, aphid. Or letter D, web worm. Okay. So for this item, we can answer this through elimination. So let's try. First, web worm. Ang, anong tawag dito? Ang tinatanong dito is, Leaves and young shoots. Wrinkled and deformed. So, ito yung epekto. Epekto. Ito naman yung uh, affected. <laughs> the effect and the affected na part. So, ang leaf hopper is karaniwang nas, from the term itself, nasa leaf siya, pero they are actually just transmitting viruses kaya hopper they transmit viruses plant bug is a more general term it's a general term this could be further subdivided into mites yung mga yan aphid yung mga yan. Tapos yung webworm naman, from the term itself, it's a worm. So more specifically, wala siya dito sa leaves at saka sa young shoots. So we can further, uh, anong tawag dito? We can further classify na, na aphids ang sagot dito because of that elimination. So remember that leaf hopper is a common uh, agent of transmission of viruses. And plant bugs is a too general term for this. 
and yung webworm is more probably nasa soil yung mga yan. So, we can go with aphids. And yes, that is the right answer. Yes, letter C, tama. Okay. Next. May ligaw na naman. Ayan. Oh, here. Number 15. To control the attack of rusts in plants, you have to A, no. A, spray with soap and alcohol daily and pesticides weekly. B, uh, spray with alcohol and salt every other day. C, destroy the fungi by applying salt water daily. Or letter D, provide good air circulation and spray with fungicide and weekly intervals. Yeah. You can send your answer in the chat box or yeah, direct message. Okay, so the answer here is letter D. Bakit letter D? Unang-una sa lahat, ito yung pinaka-optimum. Remember, we discussed a while back na applying fungicide in the right time, in the right way, and yeah. So, diseases like rusts, rusts are commonly caused by fungi. Kaya kung alam nyo na ang rust ay caused ng fungi, you can easily answer letter D kasi dito may mention yung fungicide. Diba? And actually, there is also a clue sa, sa choices natin sa letter C, destroy the fungi. Diba? So, ito. Ang mga nagpa disqualify sa mga other choices ay yung time interval. First, every other day. You cannot spray or it is not ideal to spray every other day or even daily and even weekly because ang ang probab ang magiging resulta niyan is it's either madidestroy na mismo yung mga dahon niyo or mas lalo silang, mas lalong kakalat kasi nga apply kayo ng apply. Lalo pat soap at saka alcohol to, di ba? So, these are disinfectants. So, ang mga leaf, kailangan din nila ng time to absorb. Ang ating mga plants, kailangan din nila ng time to absorb the, the fungicide. Ayan. So, ayan. Ang isa pang term dito is environmental. Environmental condition. Ang isa sa mga environmental condition na nagpo-promote ng growth ng fungi ay moist environment. Kapag sinabing moist environment, ito yung sobrang taas ng relative humidity. Sobrang basa. So kapag ganon, mas madaling mag-grow ang ating mga fungi, bacteria, and even other organisms. Ayun yung pinaka-general rule sa microbiology and, and plant pathology in, in a specific lens, na kapag sobrang moist ng environment, mas nag-favor ito ng growth ng uh, anong tawag dito? Growth ng microorganisms. So, providing a good air circulation will control this. It will control yung sobrang taas na relative humidity. Na, ano, kasi mag evaporate yung mga moist na nandoon sa inyong con environmental condition. So, letter D is the best answer for this. Rust, fungi. Okay, next question. Yeah. We plant potatoes with blank to discourage bean beetles. So, A... Cucumber, letter B, peas, letter C, beans, or letter D, radishes. So yes, the correct answer is letter C, which is beans. Actually, obvious as a question, pero here is the principle behind. Ayan. Potatoes deter bean beetle. Uh, kapag meron, ka, ang tawag dito ay ano ba? mutualism. It is somehow a form of mutualism. Ang potatoes, pinoprotektahan niya yung beans natin dito sa specific beetle na to, which is I think Mexican Mexican beetle. 
basta merong Mexican. Mexican dito. So, pinoprotektahan ng potatoes yung bean for this, whereas yung beans naman, it provides nitrogen to potatoes. Hindi ko alam kung nabanggit ko to last week, pero ang mga beans natin or legumes have a high nitrogen fixing ability. Yes, na banggit ko pala to last session. Na dahil sa bacteria, good bacteria na nasa legume, which is rhizobium. Yan. So itong bacteria na to, it fixes nitrogen from the atmosphere tapos ini-improve niya ang nitrogen level sa soil. Kaya it is beneficial sa potatoes. Since ang potatoes natin, it grows in the soil. So they have direct uh, access to that. And another is that kapag nagtalim ka ng beans, anong tawag dito? It is an organic way. Hindi ka gagamit ng nitrogen fertilizer na mga inorganic. So it is also a beneficial uh, measure that we can perform for organic agriculture. Ayan. So dapat meron tayong magandang crop pairing for this. And in this case, potato at beans, Beans, it can be mung bean, ano ba ba? string beans, basta mga beans natin. Yan. It, can, it is best planted with potatoes. Okay, so next. Which is not a biological method of controlling insects. Which is not a biological method of controlling insects. A, use of predators. B, use of plant attractants. C, use of trap plants. Or letter D, use of malathion. So the answer for this question is letter D, which is the use of malathion. The question is asking which is not a biological method. When we say biological method, we are not uh, using any chemicals, we are not using other ways, kung hindi, puro biological. Kapag biological, ano itong mga ito? Ano itong mga ito? Ito ay pwedeng insects, pwedeng botanical na mga uh, approach. At ito nga, sabi dito, trap plants. Ang trap plants, pwedeng ito yung mga halaman na magpoprotekta doon sa mismong crop na ginogrow nyo sa isang field. So pwede nyo itong ilagay sa, sa gilid. Ganyan. Same through with plant attractants. Yung sa plant attractants, it, uh, it works na maglalagay ka ng other plant para yung mga pest doon pupunta at hindi doon sa gusto mong plant. And predators, these are also uh, biological kasi these can be insects na ilalagay mo that can help you in controlling other insects. So kaya siya nandiyan, predators. Whereas yung malathion, it is a chemical input. It is a chemical input. So this is uh, considered a chemical control. This is a chemical control measure, not a biological method. So, yeah, malathion is an insecticide. Next, what kind of bacteria thrives when there is absence of oxygen? So, sige nga. Now let's try. You, you can send your answers here so at the chat box or direct message me what kind of bacteria thrives when there is absence of oxygen yeah so yes the correct answer is letter d which is anaerobic so from the term itself you can use your knowledge on prefixes yung an means an or a yeah means no or without so that condition 
it means no oxygen or without oxygen, free of oxygen. Kapag sinabi natin anaerobe. So this uh, happens when we ferment. Sabi dito, what kind of bacteria thrives, di ba? Uh, this happens when we ferment things. For example, suka. Ano yung ginagamit sa suka? Wait lang. Basta merong bacteria na nag-grow sa suka. Blah, blah, acet, acetate, parang ganun. So, yung bacteria na yun, it thrives doon. Tapos siya yung nagpo-ferment ng suka natin. Same happens with kimchi. Di ba sa kimchi, kinoclose natin, tinatakpan pa natin ng, ng plastic yan, tapos saka natin lalagyan ng uh, cap, tapos isa-store natin for how many ano. There is a bacteria that works in there. So those are ano naman, uh, good bacteria. So it can be a lactic acid bacteria. So ayun yung nag-work ko. Yeah. Next. Uh, let's have insect pest, known as blank, attacks crops and cuts plants at the ground level. Yeah, I think na discuss na rin to kanina. Ayan, so the answer for this is letter D, which is cutworms. So ang cutworms natin, uh, they are not only attacking from the top. Actually, I'm the head. Ayan, cutworms. Ang headworms attacks the leaves. Ang leaf hoppers it also attacks the leaves. And yung maggots naman, seedlings yung ina-attacking nila. So, dito, we can, oh, meron na talaga tayong clue rin from the question. Kasi ang question is on cutting the plants from the ground level. Ang pinaka- makakalito siguro dito ay yung headworms. Pero note na lang natin na ang head sa leaves, ayan, ang cutworms, cut plants from the ground level. Ayan siya. Maggots actually are most common. Ayan, ang sabi yung seedlings, pero it can also be observed sa fruits natin o kapag yung ano na, post-harvest na to, sa mga fruits natin. Ayan. Ang leaf hoppers, as I've said a while back, yung leaves yung naapektuhan niya, nagta-transmit siya ng virus. Ayan. Ayan ang ganap ng leaf hopper. Okay, so before we take our break, let's answer this. Number 20, what is an example of integrated pest management or IPM that prevents corn infestation of insects? Corn infestation of insects. So letter A, use of chemical control substances every time. B, planting different corn varieties year-round, especially hybrids with resistance. C, spraying strong insecticides from vegetative to reproductive stage. Or letter D, release of 100 trichocards, trichogramma egg parasites. So what do you think is the answer for this? This is on integrated pest management. Okay, so so for this one, we are specifically tackling for corn infestation of insects. So para natin mape-prevent yung ano na yun. Una, sabi ko kanina, in spraying yung ating mga insecticide or pesticide or any fungicide, herbicide, yung mga ganyan, it is not recommended to do this every time. So spraying strong insecticides, as what I have mentioned din kanina, 
hindi rin uh, hindi rin okay na puro lang strength ng ng insecticides pero anong tawag dito wala naman yung proper time ganyan so isa pang x sa number sa letter C is that spraying insecticides from vegetative to reproductive stage so always know the stage kailan ba umaatake ang mga insektong ito is it on the vegetative vegetative pa lang ba meron na sila but i think they are more uh, most of the insects of corn hap, uh, must be prevented sa pinaka simula pa lang so it is not ideal to spray strong insecticides from all of those stages to to all of those stages and yung letter d release of 100 trichocarids trichogamma egg parasites This is somehow a biological control, pero these parasites can further harm other plants in the cornfield. Ganon. So, ang best dito, kasi sabi is integrated pest management, di ba? So, kapag sinabing integrated, you have different inputs from cultural to biological to chemical, ganyan, to even the management ng isang field. So, ang letter D is only a biological measure. Letter C and letter A are only chemical measure. Pero ang letter B natin, planting, from the term planting, it means this has been uh, in the concept, starting pa lang, like itatanay mo pa lang siya. Alam na na mayroong different corn varieties. Bakit importante na mayroong different corn varieties year round. Kasi kapag different yung corn varieties mo or even ano, hindi masasa hindi masasana yung mga insekto. Hindi sila magsu-survive. Kasi for example, imagine magtatanim ka lang ng isang plant, isang variety. Tapos ininfest yun ng insekto. Tapos hinayaan mo lang na puro ganun na yung itatanim mo. The tendency is sa next mong pagtatanim, nandoon na naman yung mga insekto na yun. Whereas, kapag gagamit ka ng bagong variety, gagamit ka ng or even bagong halaman, hindi sila mag stay sa farm mo. Kasi kunwari, ilang months, sanay sila na, ah, ito, maganda tong i-ano, ganun yung mga insect. Maganda tong i-infest. Tapos kapag pinalitan mo the next months, ay, bakit hindi na siya ano? So, the tendency is, ah, sila doon. And, na highlight din dito, especially hybrids with resistance. Hybrids with resistance are produced using uh, ito HPR ang tawag dito, host plant resistance. Host plant resistance. Plants. So this is used with the technology of biotechnology. Biotechnology. So we have a biotechnological approach. Meron tayong host plant resistant approach. Meron tayong cultural. And dahil you are planting different, cultural. And also planting different through crop rotation, cultural din yun. So we have three different approaches. Kaya siya yung pinaka-best na answer for integrated for integrated pest management. Ayun. Okay, so let us discuss one more before we take a break. Ito. Number 21, non-parasitic plant diseases are due to A, unfavorable soil water relations B, lack of excessive lack or excessive of minerals amounts of minerals letter C environmental factors or letter D presence of nematodes again non parasitic plant diseases are due to non parasitic health unfavorable soil water relations lack or excessive amounts of minerals environmental factors and presence of nematodes So here, in answering this, sabi dito, parang the question is more of a general scope. 
non-parasitic plant diseases are due to. When we say non-parasitic plant diseases, this could be yellowing. Yung mga yan. Uh, eventual drying. Browning. Ito yung mga karaniwan nating na-observe. Most especially sa house plants. Then, uh, common to sa photos. Uh, kung, kung alam yung photos. Photos, anthurium, calathea. Yung mga yan. Kung sino naman yung mga plantito at plantita dito. Ayan. So, we have this different uh, perceived diseases na due to environmental factors. So, we need to choose the best answer, di ba? Ang letter A, yes, that could be a factor. Pero, that is a specific lang sa iilan. Same through with letter B, lack or excessive amounts of minerals. Nematodes is, X na, kasi unang-una sa lahat, this nematodes are a parasitic. Parasitic yan, so biological siya. Unlike dito sa tatlo na all are environmental factors. Ayan. So, ang soil and water relations, this can, uh, this, can have, this can be a cause for yellowing lang. For yellowing. Same, sa minerals naman, yes, yellowing then And Browning. Actually, these are all progressive. Pero, ang question kasi is more on a general scope. If we will look at it, non-parasitic plant diseases are due to. So, we will go to the most general na answer, which is environmental factors. Na under niya, ang letter D at saka letter A. So, yeah. I hope that that is a clear. So, let's have a another five minute break. So yeah, you can just chill muna, rest muna, and let's pause for a while. So we'll be back after five minutes.
Okay, so let's move to the next question. Uh, which pest take their food by biting off and eating the leaves and other parts of the plants? Which pests take their food by biting off and eating the leaves and other parts of the plants? Sucking insects, chewing insects, leaf hoppers, or aphids? These are actually, this is actually an obvious uh, question. So the answer for this item is letter B, which is chewing insects. The clues are ito, biting off at saka eating the leaves. So again, they are asking about pests. So this will be general type of pest. For example, hit insects, insects. So probably one or two, if I'm the one answering this on the spot, it would probably be one and two. Kasi itong dalawa ay sabi ko kanina ang leaf hoppers ay nag, uh, ano, ay nag distribute na, na, na nag na transmit na mga viruses. Kasi yan. So either one of these two would be the answer. And from these context clues, we can see that it is chewing insects. Ayan. So, more of this, mamaya meron pa tayong mamimit ng mga ganito. Ayan. Yeah. So, let's go with this item. What is the insect vector? Rice disease called tungro. Ayan. Ano yung uh, insect vector ng rice disease? A. Nephotetic Sevicerena, Vericena, Santomonas, Rhizoctonia solani, or Pyricularia orizei. So here, sige, I will discuss na agad-agad dito kasi these are important na mga scientific names. Kapag una siguro na ako overwhelmed na okay, ano itong mga to? Ganyan. So I want to discuss them deeper. So, ang letter A, ayun yung nagkakos ng rice trunk, ng rice tungro. Remember that. Uh, Nepothetics verisena. Santomonas is a type of bacteria. So, ito, ang question is insect vector, di ba? So, we are looking for an insect. Ang Santomonas is a type of bacteria that is causing, remember that this is a bacteria, causing rice blight. Rhizoctonia solani naman is a type of fungi that is causing rotting. And yung Rhizoctonia solani is not only sa rice, it can also happen in different vegetables like tomatoes, ganyan. Rotting. Whereas yung Pyricularia orizae causes rice blast. This is also a fungi. Causes rice blast. So, remember their associations, ha? Nephotetics verisena is the insect vector. Siya lang actually yung vector dito. Kapag sinabing vector, ito yung nagtatransmit. Ayan. So, it, it is an insect vector ng rice tungro. Rice tungro is a virus. So, kailangan niya ng, ng vector ng magtatransmit, katulad ng leaf hopper, para kumalat yung virus doon sa field nyo. So, ayun yung rice tungro virus. So, again, Santomonas, SPP is a bacteria. Santomonas, Santomonas uh, is, can also infest yung mga maliliit na halaman, mga seedlings. So it can be associated with damping off as well. And damping off. So, uh, may mga ilang species ng santomonas na nagkakos din nito. Basta, remember, sabi ko kanina, pwede kayo mag-classify ng columns sa silalagay nyo doon. Ano yung mga bacteria? Ano yung mga fungi? Ano yung mga viruses? Para at least, kapag may lumabas doon na 
isa, ah, alam ko bakteriya to, ito, ah, alam ko fungi, ito, alam ko virus to. So, that is another tip that you can do. Okay, so next. Ito, what kind of plant, uh, of organism injures or damages the plants? So, for this question, again, it is a general question. What kind of organism ang tinatanong uh, that injures or damages the plant? So, we also need a general answer. And then, in that case, it is the letter C, which is pest. So, here in this item, pest ang answer. Virus, disease, and bacteria are also organisms that endures or damages the plants, but they are not looking for a specific answer. So, general answer, general question. Okay, here. Which of these are vegetable diseases? So, first, we need to know kung ano yung mga klaseng vegetables. Tapos kung meron ba kayong alam ng mga diseases na mga vegetables na yun, yung mga ganun na bagay. So, let us try eliminating. So, ang kailangan natin dito, tatlo-tatlo yan, di ba? Like may uh, one, one, two, three, gano'n. One, two, three. So, kailangan natin makuha yung choice na merong tatlong vegetable diseases. Ayan. So, ayan. Ang antrac, ah, hindi, sayo. Bacterial blight mo na ba? Bacterial blight, Sige. Ito na lang. Damping off. Unahin natin sa damping off. Damping off happens sa seeds. Damping off. Ito ay karaniwang nangyayari sa seeds kapag kunwari ano pa lang. Maliit pa lang yung seed. Diba? Ganyan. Tapos may tumubo ng konting ano konting konting shoot, ayan, ang damping off is karandiwan itong nagda-dry or nagbablaken para hindi siya mag, maging successful. So, ang, ang damping off, it happens first sa mga seedlings natin. Sa mga sobrang nililit pa na seeds. So, with that, kapag na-eliminate na natin yun, wala na yung A tas B. So, andito na lang tayo sa C at saka D. So we have anthracnose, we have head rot, and we have bacterial leaf rot. Ang head rot ay nasa mga crucifers. Ayan. So ito yung nangyayari sa repolyo, yung mga ganun. Ang bacterial leaf rot naman, ang bacterial leaf rot, not all happens sa ating mga vegetables. Ayan. It happens then sa uh, leafy, lalo na sa mga leaf. Doon siya actually, like, ano ba yung mga example ng leafy? Lettuce, mga kangkong, mga ganon. And aside from that, it also happens on mga fruits natin. Later, we will be seeing pictures of different leaves na meron mga ganito. And even uh, coffee, ayan, meron din yan. So, dito, if you are talking about vegetable diseases, the best answer is letter D. Leaf mosaic happens in uh, mung bean, happens in okra, same through with powdery mildew. Powdery mildew is commonly happening in pepper, in okra, in even in eggplant. And anthracnose are for fruiting vegetables such as tomato, Yan mga yan. Ayan yung mga karaniwang merong ganyan. So in answering this type of question, it is very helpful kapag kaharap tayo ng mga examples, aning mga halaman yung merong ganito. 
Tapos hanapin nyo na na doon kung saan kaya makakita ng mas marami. And ayan yung best na answer for this. So, yeah, yeah. So, ang leaf mosaic, ito nga yung mga karaniwan. Mamaya, I will be showing pictures about, on this. Tapos, ang powdery mildew, meron din ako papakita. Anthrax nose, is, it, this actually happens then sa mango, but also in fruiting vegetables, such as tomato, pepper, yung mga yan. So, that's it for this item. Okay, so, uh, let's move to this. Which fungus disease cause discolored patches on foliage, uh, drop sea stalks, and prematurely rotting fruits? So here, uh, the next item siguro will be an, a more informational na items that I hope that can also review you. So first, let's, uh, this, the correct answer here is botrytis. Sabi dito, discolored patches on foliage. Foliage is also, uh, in simple terms, a leaf, uh, drops his stalks, and prematurely, no, uh, prematurely rotting fruits. Rotting fruits. So here is an example ng botrytis sa strawberry. So ito, nagrarot na yung fruit. Ayan, ito ang simula. Ano pa yung sabi? Colored patches. Ayan, yung mga patches, patches doon. Here, ito pa, patches. Sa dahon. So, this is botrytis. Another thing that can help you in reviewing is looking for pictures. Perhaps meron, maraming websites na ganito eh. Parang diseases of rice, of rice, diseases of ganito. I encourage you to review further on a one leafy plant, vegetable, that's your rice. Ayan, leafy plant, perhaps lettuce, uh, fruiting vegetable pa pala, tomato, or okra, or sile, yung mga common, that's rice and corn. Tignan yung mga diseases nila. In picture, para kapag na, nakita nyo in words, ah, al, al, alin doon yung merong rotting, ano? alin dito yung uh, merong discolored patches. Ganun. So that you can uh, analyze it kahit words lang. Tingin kayo ng mga pictures. Okay, so next. Which plant diseases affect the healthy conditions of plants? and characterized as infectious organisms too small to be seen by the naked eye and easily transmitted by sucking insects. So here, our key word for this is too small and transmitted. As I've mentioned a while back, uh, insects such as the leafhopper transmits viruses. So the answer pala here is viruses. The answer is viruses. So, ang pinaka ano dito is too small. Kasi sa lahat ng bacteria, virus ang pinaka maliit. Sa lahat ng bacteria, sa lahat ng mga common organisms, virus ang pinaka maliit. So, bacteria can be seen through a microscope as well as fungi. You can also see that. But viruses are too small. Kaya nga, ang, nung una, di ba, sobrang na, nahirapan sila to create a vaccine, ganyan, more, most especially sa mga ano. Because you really need intense na microscope to study their behavior, to study their structure, to study how they multiply, yung mga ganun na bagay. Thus, here, ang keyword natin is too small at saka easily transmitted. Next, here, which of the following will contribute to effective parasite control when properly implemented? So, in this question, from the uh, from the question itself, we can easily pinpoint what is the answer, which is letter A, which is parasitic control. It says there, which of the following will contribute to effective parasite control when properly implemented? All of those things can be implemented. You can do cultural method of control, biological method of control, chemical method of control in a general 
uh, crop protection measure. But the question is looking for parasite control. Thus, the best answer for this item is letter A, which is parasitic control. Okay. Ay. So, na ulit to, what insect pest attacks the crop and cuts plants at the ground level? So, kanina na discuss na natin to, this item, ang answer dito ay cutworm. Okay. Okay, so ito. This is actually a technical na question na naman. Which of the symptom of which of the following are the symptoms of the fruit crop called ring spot? Which of the following are symptoms of ring spot? Ayun na lang. Ano yung ano, na type? Okay, so ang ring spot happens in leaves and as well sa papaya. Meron tayong tinatawag na papaya ring spot. I was able to uh, place a picture here of the papaya. Pero ito, sa leaves, meron dong appearance of small, nearly circular yellow spots that turn into brown, corky spots with yellow halo on the leaves. Okay, so in studying diseases, kailangan natin alamin kung ano yung pinaka-distinct sa kanila. For example, for ring spot, ang hahanapin natin ay yellow spots. Merely circular. From the term itself, ring, the spot. So, ang tatandaan natin, ring spot, yellow spots. Na may halo. Ayan. Yellow halo. Which is almost the same lang naman. Ganito, ganito yung itsura niya. Sa leaf. Ayan. May white spot. Sabi sa inyo, kay, mahalaga kapag ganito na Anong tawag dito? Tingin kayo ng mga pictures para mas ma-identify nyo. That is the spot. Itong nasa gitna. Yan. Tapos may halo siya na yellow. Which is yung nakapalibot. So ganyan. Tapos may ganun siya na yellow stuff sa palibot na. So this plant is on tobacco. This is tobacco ring spot. Hindi punta. So, ayun pala yung ano, yung answer, it's ring spot. Na merong nearly circular yellow spots with yellow halo. So, yung others, these are for other diseases that you will can that you will be tackling then mamaya. Marami pa tayong pictures diyan mamaya. Ito na. Okay. The symptom characterized by extensive necrotic area. So, ang necrotic area ay blight. The answer here is blight. Ayan, blight. So, sa blight, ganito yung nangyari. Kapag sinabi pa na natin necrotic, ang, ang sabi dito, di ba, extensive necrotic area. Pag necrotic, oops. pag necrotic, ibig sabihin, namamatay na. Parang ano na to? Uh, wilted na siya. Sobrang dry na wilted. And here is an example in tomato. Ayan. So this sickness is identified as blight. Kapag marami ng necrotic na spots, like this one, sa leaves, ayan, ito mga to, that is blight. Again, blight also happens sa rice and other crops like talong then so you can look at pictures now different blight so this is a, a symptom kapag blight tatandaan na my necrotic the extensive necrotic area na okay so here for the next item it is used to control weeds Alin dito ang, ang ginagamit natin to control weeds? A, herbicide. B, insecticide. C, biocide. Or letter D, flame. So, in this question, 
The clear answer is letter A, herbicide. This is a basic question actually. Dapat alam natin kung ano yung ginagamit per problem. Kanina, bago tayo mag-start, I discussed the three branches of, of crop protection, which is weed science, plant pathology, tapos entomology. So, weed science, weeds, kailangan na herbicide. Herbicide. Plant pathology, it is further divided Siguro sa fungi, uh, bacteria, fungi bacteria, use bactericide, or fungi use fungicide. In general, you can use fumigants. Fumigants. Pwede fumigants. Whereas sa entomology, we will use insecticides. There are other branches of this. We have uh, nematology, sa nematodes naman to, uh, tapos mollusks, So, ito yung mga terms na dapat nyong malaman in the area of crop protection. Ito yung mga control methods, control agents. So, these are chemical agents pala ha? Chemical agents for chemical control. Yan yung mga rin yung ginagamit. Next, okay. Let's move here. It is the management of pest by manipulation of the environment or implement implementation of preventative practices such as crop rotation. So dito, pag tinignan para natin, ano sabi niya? Manipulation of the environment. Preventative practices. Tapos na example pa siya na crop rotation. So, we can see claim control. Is it a manipulation of the environment? Is it a preventative practices? So, claim control usually happens in weeds but is not that usually advised. Chemical control, is it a manipulation of the environment? Is it a preventative practice? Physical control, we will know more about this mamaya. Pero in a nutshell, physical control is, for example, pulling of weeds. Uh, ano ba ba? Yung pagtabas ng mga damo, yung mga ganun. Ayun yung physical control. So here, manipulation of the environment, we are talking about culture. Paano mo ginugrow yung iyong mga halang? So this falls under cultural control. So again, kapag cultural control, you are manipulating the environment. Ano yung mga kailangan na temperature para hindi tumubo yung ganitong klaseng damo. Yung mga ganun na bagay. Other is crop rotation. Sabi ko kanina, yung crop rotation, ginagawa siya para yung mga insects natin ay hindi magstay at magreproduce. Kaya pwedeng, kunwari, three months ganito. Kahit may insects doon, tas three months bagong halaman, hindi nababalik yung mga insects from the other plant. Kasi meron tayong pinatawag na specificity pa rin kapag sa plants natin. So, hindi lahat ng insects is compatible sa lahat ng halaman. Ayan. So, meron pa rin specificity. So, if we do crop rotation, which is a cultural control measure, ang tendency doon is to lessen the population of insect species that are infesting your field. So that is why it is also considered as a manipulation of the environment. So as we move forward, we'll be uh, knowing more about the different controls. But for now, let's have a again a five-minute break.
for us to have uh, rest na information. Baka nagkakaroon na ng information overload, di ba? So, yan. Let's have a five-minute break.
Okay, so let's continue. Ayan, so number 35, uh, biological control, which in, uh, involves the utilization of predators, parasites, and pathogens to manage pest population below the economic injury level. So, alin sa mga ito yan? It's, is it microorganisms, natural enemies, mutualism, or commensalism? So, the answer here is not, uh, D, which is natural enemies. Ang microorganisms, it is a very broad term, and it is not a form of biological control. Letter C and letter D are both ecological relationships that are existing, that are naturally existing, like mutualism. Mutualism is kapag nag-benefit kayong dalawa. Commensalism, as I have mentioned a while back, I uh, living in another organism without harming the host organism. So yeah, the natural enemies, it is uh, a, actually a form of biological control where you introduce a, an, uh, a different organism in your farm or in the place where you grow your plants para makontrol yung pagdami ng other population. So that is why in using natural enemies, we are looking for predators, uh, parasites, and even pathogens na pwedeng mag-control. In another aspect sa pathogen na dito sa pathogen, we have what we call antibiosis. Ayan na. Antibiosis or biocontrol. Ayan, pwede rin biocontrol. Ito ay yung kapag merong isang organism na inhibit niya or napipigilan niya ang growth ng isa pang organism. So this actually happens between some fungi and a bacteria. For example, bacillus. We have a study na a research proposal pala that was submitted to the Department of Science and Technology last 2020. Tapos, ang topic kasi namin doon is about biocontrol. So, gagamit kami ng bacteria which is bacillus, bacillus species, more probably bacillus species, then para i-control ang growth ng cercospora. If you remember kanina, we have an item na nabanggit ng cercospora. So ang cercospora, actually, as I've mentioned, ay isang disease na common sa uh, vegetables. Like for example, okra, mayroon tayong cercospora leaf spot, and this sa study namin, we will be using it supposedly for coffee. Yeah, so sa mga coffee farms natin, sa, sa mga coffee tree, trees natin. So through literature review, we have figured out that bacillus and cercospora have an antagonistic association. Kapag sarabi antagonistic, so this is, this is what you can see kapag nasa ano kayo, nasa plate sa Petri dish. Kasi ganito yung setup na. For example, this is the Petri dish. Tapos ilalagay mo dito yung Bacillus species mo. Tapos ilalagay mo dito yung Cercospora species mo. And this uh, this space here is called the zone of inhibition. Of inhibition. So, kapag silang dalawa ay hindi naglapit sa isa't isa, ibig sabihin, they have antagonistic association. Ibig sabihin, hindi mag-grow ang isa sa presence ng isa. Hindi nag-grow ang bacillus kapag merong cercospora. Or you can do it the other way. Hindi mag-grow ang cercospora kapag merong bacillus doon. So in our proposal, using biological control, biocontrol, uh, our proposal is using bacillus species to create a microbial inoculant na pwede i-apply or i-spray sa coffee farms. Tapos doon, para hindi na siya mag-develop mag ng cercospora, which is, yun nga, na, na nagkukos ng leaf, leaf spots. Yeah. So, that is an example of biological control and natural enemies. Ayan. So, itong dalawang to, they are natural enemies. They have an antagonistic association. Ayan. 
Next, okay. So here, which crop disease is distinguished by the appearance of rings, different shades of brown, green, yellow spot on the on the leaves? Okay. So here is. Ayan. It. Ito na yung kanina dito sa score na leaf spot. Ngayon naman ito ay ibang type ng leaf spot. Sabi ko kanina, ang leaf spot is commonly caused by fun fungi. So, there are a lot of fungi that can cause leaf spot. And in this case, this is another uh, variant of that disease. Sabi dito, appearance of rings, different shades of brown, green, yellow spots on the leaf. So, on gulls, we will be discussing this a while back. Uh, a while back, later. Mosaic naman is, alam niyo yung parang kapag gumagawa, yung tabi-tabi sila, parang merong filter na ganito. Parang ganon. Same with that. Mosaic. You can actually, hindi ko lang meron ako dito ngayon. Eh. Let's see mamaya. Ang gulls, meron yan mamaya. Anthrax knows this happens on mango din kapag merong mga blocking spots doon sa mango natin. Ayun, that is anthrax nose disease in mango. So, anthrax nose is black. Gulls mamaya is parang mga umbok. Ayan, parang nag nagaano siya, nagsiswell. Swelling ang, ang gulls. Swell. And yung mosaic, it's on the surface then pero hindi siya ganito. Hindi siya brown, green, and yellow spots. That can be yellow lang. Ganyan. So here, itong leaf spot, it can be a combination of all of those colors. So take note of this. Again, ulitin kayo sabi ko na the best thing that you can do to have at least a glimpse of every diseases ay to look at pictures like this one. Para kapag nakita niyo yung pictures, ah, ganito yung itsura ng leaf spot, ganito yung itsura ng uh, blight, ganito yung itsura ng blast, ng gall. Kapag Tinanong sa inyo in words, you can easily describe it. Ano ba ito? Meron daw brown, li, uh, brown, green, tsaka yellow na spots. Ah, leaf spot to. Yeah. So, that is one thing that we can do. Okay. Let's go here. Number 37, yellow wing of leaves and shoots due to lack of light. Okay. So, the answer for this is letter A. There is a similar term associated to yellowing, which is letter B. Yellowing din to, chlorosis. Pero, chlorosis happens not because of the lack of light. Chlorosis happens due to environmental factors and diseases. So this chlorosis is a technical term for yellowing due to this, whereas etiolation is because of the lack of light. We had an experiment last year regarding etiolation. Yung, yung, yung ilalagay mo yung corn leaves sa isang dark place, tas yung iba sa labas. And that is etiolation kasi sobrang yellow yung nangyari compared nung compare namin yung corn leaves sa loob ng cabinet sa nasa labas sobrang yellow no nandito compared dito so the, the thing that happened there is etiolation because of the lack of light naging yellow yung leaves ng isang halaman sun scalding and scorching are both relating to the sun and that will not uh re, that will not likely uh, result to yellowing of leaves but it can be brown or drying. Ayan. Burning of leaves to ang mga to. Sun scalding. So, ang yellow nung dito, chlorosis siya etiolation. So, take note of that term na etiolation, lack of light, and also chlorosis, lack of uh, yellowing because of environmental factors and diseases. Alright. Next. Here. The use of tools, implements, and machines to reduce or eliminate weeds, pests, and diseases. So again, this is a general question. Ngayon, doon tayo pupunta sa aspeto ng tools, implements, and machines. 
So dun pa lang, you can already see that the answer for this one is letter B, which is mechanical control. Mechanical control, ito yung paggamit ng mga rotavator, ito yung paggamit ng mga harrow, ganyan, para i matanggal yung mga weed species. Another is mechanical using the pest and diseases, yung mga pruning shears natin, tatanggalin natin yung mga uh, disease na halaman na susunod yan. Ayan. So that is an example of mechanical control. Again, if it is something related to tools, implements, and machines, and uh, to control yung ating mga diseases, pest, insects, tsaka weeds, ayan, it is mechanical control. So I think the next items will be dealing with this now. So here, the following are causes of disease except if you remember what I said items back, pinakauna yata, sabi ko, you have three things to study in plant pathology, which is bacteria, fungi, and viruses. Those three are causes of plant diseases. We're asking letter D, and we have tackled this in a lot of items, that blight is an example of a disease. So the first three are causes, and this one is an example of the disease na. So blight is caused by bacteria such as Santomonas SPP. So Next, now here, which fungal disease of plants causes seedlings to rot at the soil level? I've already also tackled this a while. Na the answer for this is damping. Ayan. Nag-growing yata ako kanina. Ayan. Ang damping ay nangyayari sa early stages ng halaman kapag kunwari may patubo pa lang na ganyan, maliit pa lang. Tapos itong part na to ay kunwari ito ay ganito. Tapos may dry na part dyan. Tapos ito okay. Ganun. So kung kunwari ito ay dry, yung fungi na yan ay inaatake niya yung seedlings para hindi na siya lumaki pa. That is damping. Or another term that you may encounter for this is damping off. Damping off. So they are just the same. So this is a fungal disease. Nasa seedlings pa lang. Ito yung seedlings natin, di ba? Nagrarat na dito. So ibig sabihin na bubulok na. So sa soil level pa lang. daming problema ng halaman, no? Okay. Number 41, which plant disease causes round swelling or growth on plants? Kanina, binanggit na rin natin to. And the answer is letter C, which is gulls. Ganito ang itsura niya. Sabi ko sa inyo, makakatulong talaga kapag tumitingin kayo ng pictures. So ganito ang itsura ng gulls. Uh, karaniwan rin to nakikita sa mga malalaking puno. Hindi ako familiar doon sa puno na yung kulay red. Tapos as in, ang dami niyang ganito. Gulls ang tawag dito. Gulls. So, kapag sa exam nyo, nakakita kayo ng, ay, naka, ano kayo, na swelling. Okay, plant disease swelling. More probably, gulls ang sagot doon. Ngayon ang itsura niyo. Next. Ito. Which plant disease blocks the uptake of water? So, Dito pa lang actually, makikita na natin sa question, blocks the uptake. That is actually a context clue. Uptake. Kapag sinabi natin uptake, from baba to taas, di ba? So doon pa lang, may kuno tayo, ah, baka nasa root to. Nasa root to, root rot. Actually, root rot is a huge problem for Farms, hydroponic farms, then actually. Kasi ang root rot, mamamatay na lang yung halaman mo, hindi mo na alam. Hindi mo alam na, ah, 
nasa root pala yung problema nito. Ang karaniwang manifestation ng root rot is uh, nag-yellow na lahat ng dahon, tapos nagiging brown hanggang mamaya wilted na. O kaya nagkakaroon ng uh, maraming dahon ang nahuhulog. Ganun. So, dito, ang ginagawa ng root rot is yung roots natin. Sige, I will draw. Ang roots natin, for example, ito yung roots. Roots na lang ng lettuce na lang. Ang mga ayan yung roots ng lettuce. Pero mga hibla-hibla lang. Kasi ito yung what? net crop sa hydroponics. So, Kasi dito yung lettuce. Okay. So ang ginagawa ng root rot, nakasubmerge siya sa water. So ang ginagawa ng root rot, ayan, ay bumubuo siya ng slime layer. Slime layer dito. So, ang nangyayari kapag may root rot yung halaman nyo, is merong slime layer na. Ang slime layer na ito is karaniwang kulay brown. Kaya ang root rot is tinatawag din na brown rot. Kapag may slime sa isang lugar, more sa isang lugar, sa isang halaman, more probably it is a bacteria or fungi. Ayan. So, aanohin siya ng slime. Babalutan siya ng slime. Ngayon, in the, in the hydroponic setup, nakalubog yan sa water. And in this water, may mga nutrients. For example, these are the nutrients. Nitrogen, uh, potassium, phosphorus. Ngayon, these nutrients will try to go dito. Pero, dahil nga meron ng binuong slime yung root rot natin, itong root rot, meron na siyang binuong slime, hindi na sila makakapunta doon. Thus, kapag walang efficient na transportation ng water at nutrients sa ating roots, hihina na rin yung plant natin. Hihina yung plant natin, tapos mamamatay na siya as the time goes by. So that is the picture of root rot, specifically in the context of hydroponics. Ang maganda kapag sa hydroponics nangyari ito is that pwede mo kasing tanggalin ito eh. Kasi ito yung net pot, di ba? Parang slot lang yan dyan. So, pwede mong tanggalin, i-remove mo to para makita mo kung may root rot. Itataas mo siya, kunwari ito. Andito yung roots. Itataas mo na siyang ganun. Makita mo na, ah, kulay brown na siya, baka may root rot to. Pero kapag nasa soil kayo, hindi mo pwede bubungkalin mo lahat ng mga halaman mo sa farm, di ba? So, hindi naman practical yun. Na, na bubungkalin mo lahat. So, Mahirap mangyari ito kapag sa soil and mahirap siya i-control. Kaya dapat sanita, uh, ano talaga, madinis ng field, hindi kayo nag-overwater kasi ang root rot is, ang ano niyan, is overwatering. Kapag sobrang daming tubig, kapag hindi maganda ang drainage ng soil, ayan, root rot ang nangyayari. So, ang, ang pinaka-cause ng root rot is overwatering. Let's move. Ayan. Andito na yung mga pictures. Oh, sige. I will just discuss na lang. Okay, number 43. Which plant disease causes small spots to occur mainly on the underneath side of the leaves? So here is a picture of rust. Ayan. So this the answer here is rusting. So here is a picture of rusting. 
small pustules appear on the undersides and sometimes sa uh, tops ng leaf when a plant is, in is infected with rust. So ang rust, meron din yan sa coffee, meron din yan sa mga common natin na mga vegetables, meron din rust. It's a common uh, disease that is caused by a fungi. Always take note of that, nakapag rust fungi. And yeah. Remember then that they are mainly on the underside of leaves. So mainly on the Pero there are also instances na, na sa taas. Pero ang mas gusto nila yung nasa baba na. So that is rust. So ito mga to kung makapansin nyo, puro general, di ba? Rust, blight, ganyan. Pero specifically, if you will be talking in the agricultural context, like sa amin talaga, meron pa yung coffee rust, okra rust. Uh, Bawat like more specific talaga siya. So next, we move for uh, the next item sa number 44. Ayan, which plant disease causes open wounds? Ito, tulad nito, on woody plant stem. So this one is called canker. Ito na yung kanina sinabi ko. Ayan, canker. Ang canker, nagkakaroon ng open wounds. Like this one. Canker. Ang canker ay nangyayari rin, hindi lang sa stem, but even sa citrus, sa pomelo, lemon, meron din, orange, iba sa mga citrus, canker. Ang ganap dyan ay, yung canker is caused by a bacteria. Anong tawag dito? Dinodominate niya, tapos parang pinubuksan niya. Yung bacteria na, na nagkakos na ito. Pinubuksan niya. Yung ano, para magmukhang, uh, anong tawag dito? Entry for other bacteria to go in. Ayan. Ayan ang ganap ng kanker. But in this question, sorry, woody plant, wounds. Ang keyword kapag, kapag kanker ay wounds. Yung kanina, kapag rust, small spot, pwede yan under the leaves. Kanina yung gall naman, review, ay swelling. Review lang to. Gall, swelling. Kapag canker, wounds, so mga bruises or sukat. And small spots, rust. Ah, it, ito naman ang smut. Ang tawag dito ay smut. Ayan. This is black smut of corn. Sa corn ito, sabi na blisters that burst open. Di ba ang pangit na yun? Burst open, releasing black spores. So ganito ang itsura ng smut. Sa smut, ang pinakakarakteristik niyan ay black. Parang lumalaki. Ano, ano ba yung blisters sa, sa Tagalog? Na parang ano ito, di ba? Ah, ba? Paltos. Yes, paltos na. Ayun, para siyang paltos na may something sa loob, tapos magbo-burst na lang siya. That is called smut. Which is hindi yan ideal talaga. No. Ayun, so ayun ang itsura ng smut. Naghapi, nangyayari ito sa corn. Corn lang actually yung pinaka, ano nito, pinaka-victim talaga nito ng no, ng Ano dito? Fungi na ito. Smut pala is caused by a fungi kasi may spores. Fungi. So again, ulitin na naman natin, review na naman tayo. Uh, small spots underneath of the leaves, rust. Kapag swelling, gall. Kapag wounds, canker. Kapag black spores o kaya blisters. Smut. Smut. Okay. Next. Okay. So here is another. Dito, which crop disease on leaf surface as white, gray, or purple spots? So I want to introduce to you mildew. 
mildew. Ang mildew is karaniwan namang may powder. So if you see sa question na may powder, white, gray, purple spots, mildew yun. Ganito yung tsura niya. Ito, karaniwan ko ito na-observe dati nung no, nagtanim ako ng pepper, pepper eggplant. Yan, pe- pepper eggplant. Sila yung mga karaniwan mayroong powder mildew. Okra rin pala, okra. Ayan. Sila yung karaniwan na mayroong uh, mildew. So, ganito yung tsura niya. Oh, again, ulit na naman tayo. Let's take advantage of the anong tawo dito? Art of repetition. Kapag sinabing gal, ito ay yung may swelling. Kapag rust, small spots, underneath, underneath, ano pa? Kapag canker, ano ang keyword ng canker? Wounds. Kapag smut. Blisters. Na nagaana ng black. Something. Nag babers ng black. Spores. And kapag mildew. It's either my powder. Or white, gray, or purple spots. Like this one. So uh, again, gall, swelling, rust, small spots, canker, wounds, smart blisters, or black spores, mildew, powder, or white, gray, or purple. We will tackle more pa dito sa mga next na items. But before that, let us have our five-minute break. So you can take it uh, to eat your food, uh, mag merienda, see our break, and drink your water. So we'll be back after five minutes.
Okay, okay, let's move. All right. So for number 47, we have this picture. Which crop disease is distinguished by the appearance of rings of different shades of brown, green, or yellow that make spot on the leaves? So from the question itself, I already have a clue there. It says, make spot on the leaves. And this is an example of leaf spot. The answer here is leaf spot. Again, we've already tackled gulls and mildew. Yung mosaic, feel ko hindi ako nakapaglagay ng isang picture ng mosaic. Pero let's search mamaya. Ayan. Uh, mildew. Ay, mildew. Leaf spot. So this is how leaf spots look like. So on leaf spots, brown, green, or yellow. So here, may yellow na ganyan. May somehow yellow sa gitna, tas may brown sa, sa gilid. This is also yung kanina kinikwento ko na study namin na ano, ito yung ano niya, coffee uh, leaf spot, circospora leaf spot. Ayan. So, para siyang ganito. Na may yellow sa gitna tapos may brown sa paligid. So, that's how it looks like. Ayan. Different shades of brown, green, or yellow. Rings. Next. Okay, let's go. Oh, here. Which insect pest tear, grind, or chew their food? From the, from the item itself. Okay. From the item itself, we can see tear, grind, or chew their food. So the answer here is chewing insects. There are some questions that I got that I've also encountered na, na sobrang obvious ng sagot. Which is good kasi ano tao dito? I know naman that people who are taking are hindi masyadong detail talaga dapat. And because you all have different backgrounds. Like for example, may nag-bachelors na fisheries, bachelors ng ibang ano, yeah, so they are compensating for that. Kaya there are some questions talaga that are general. Ayan. Okay, so here, next. Number 49. Which is a way of controlling plant disease by isolating a patch or a single diseases plant? So here, the key word dito ay isolating. And when we are isolating, we are doing quarantine. So this is one of, hindi lang, sa, hindi lang pala sa tao ginagawa ito, no? even sa plants. More specifically, if you are transporting plants from one place to another, uh, kailangan din kasi nilang ma-acclimatize. Kapag sinabing acclimatize, ma-used ma to, ano ba, ano? masanay, masanay sa conditions na nasa bagong lugar. So this happens uh, kapag nag-i-introduce tayo ng other other plants sa isang lugar. But it is not always advised to introduce sa isang lugar kasi we cannot say if that plant is anong tawag dito? If that plant is magiging invasive sa lugar na yon. For example, dito sa Pilipinas, Cogon grass yata. Basta mayroong isang grass here sa Philippines na dinala lang dito accidentally. Which is, basta Cogon grass yata, if I'm not mistaken. Na ngayon, ang dami nang <laughs> naging peste na siya dito, di ba? So, that is sad. So, that is the thing that we are preventing when we are doing quarantine. We isolate the disease plants or even mga weeds ayan kasi ang mga weeds alam niyo ba nagaling din talaga sila sa boto ayan at mas marami silang boto isang halaman na nakakapag-produce ng 100,000 10,000 na mga boto so sobrang dali lang nila i-transport no wonder kung bakit lagi silang nasa kung saan-saan lang kasi they can be also transported using us tayo pala 
kaya rin natin silang i-transfer. Kapag kung mara, meron lang, dumaki- meron lang dumikit sa pants mo na seeds nila, kung sa kapupuntang next, more probably, maita-transport mo siya. They can also be transported using air. <laughs> air. <laughs> using wind. Yan, wind, air. So, yung mga lumilipad, ganyan. Ayun. And even water. Pwede rin yun. So, ayun ang uh, benefit ng isolating or ng quarantine to prevent something, pests and diseases, from going to other places. Same, to, same thing that we are doing during the pandemic, during the lockdowns. So next, which is a combination of two or more methods of controlling disease to yield a higher chance of effectiveness. The key word here is two or more methods in combination. When we are thinking of combination or two or more methods, we are actually looking for an integration of methods of controlling this disease. As what I've said, as what I've said, kanina, may example tayo kanina. I don't know if anong number yun. Pero IPM or Integrated Pest Management. Integrated Pest Management. Yeah. So sa integra- Integrated Pest Management, you are not only limiting yourself as a farmer or as an agriculturist to one type of pest management. For example, hindi lang puro chemical control, hindi lang puro pesticide, fungicide, bactericide, lahat na ng side, hindi lang puro ganun. You are also integrating forms of mechanical control, such as uh, using perhaps yung mga implements natin, like harrow to get rid of the weeds. Tapos, isa pa, you can also use biological control. You can plant uh, ano tawag dito? plants na makakapag-inhibit ng population ng isang pest o ng isang insekto. Yung mga ganun. You can also do uh, protection using traps. Ayan. May mga trap plants din tayo. And you can also use biological control or biotechnological control or HPR uh, host plant host plant resistance na gumagamit ng, bi- ng mga varieties that are already resistant sa mga ganitong klaseng pests. An example of this is Bt corn. You can use Bt corn which are genetically modified na corn para kasi yung mga yon hindi na sila aatakihin ng Asiatic corn borer which is ayun talaga yung problema ng corn industry ever since. So yeah, that is an example of integrated pest management. It is a combination of two or more methods in controlling disease. So this is very important for a farmer to know. And in your context, uh, I already said this that if you have someone, if you are near to a certain farm, if you know someone from a certain farm, you can go siguro para ano, mag-visit lang, tignan nyo kung ano yung mga management nila. Ay, ito pala yung mulching, ito pala yung uh, herbicide, ito pala yung mga uh, weeds dito. Yung mga ganun. Kasi me as an agriculture student dati, as in yung experiences that we go sa farm talaga, ganyan, yeah, it really helped me to visualize and know kung ano yung pinag-aaralan ko. So if you have that opportunity, if you have that chance to go to a nearby farm, kahit sa mismong barangay nyo lang, ganyan, yan. pumunta kayo, tapos tignan nyo yung mga practices nila doon. O kaya mag-interview kayo ng mga ano. It, it, it may be time-consuming, but it would be worth it because you will have first-hand experience on the things that you're studying for the day. Because experience is also a great teacher, right? Yeah, okay. So next, let's move. Number 51. Which poison is absorbed by plants and then ingested by the pest when it feeds? So here, we have different types. We can eliminate actually muna. Ayan. So ang fumigants, ang fumigants is for fungi, spray to actually fungi and bacteria, and other pests, a general term general term. 
stomach poison, this is not <laughs> applicable for an offing ko pang guru lang talaga yan. So we can go with either A, so contact poison, or letter B, systematic poison. The key terms here in this item I, the process. You look at it, absorbed by plants, ingested by the pest when it's feed. Contact poison happens kapag agad-agad dumapo, patay na agad. That's contact poison from the term itself, contact poison. Systematic poison is this one. Na-absorb ng halaman, tapos kapag kinain ng peste yung halaman na yun, mamatay sila. So that is systematic poison. There is a process along with it. Hindi na siya basta-basta. Hindi na siya ganun. So that, for this item, the answer is systematic poison. Okay. Next. Uh, which pest control involves sanitation, removing insect breeding and hiding, and using insect-resistant plant varieties? Again, involves sanitation, removing insect breeding and hiding using insect resistant plant varieties. So for all of these examples, meron tayong common ground, which is action. And you are also manipulating the environment. And this is also a thing that we have already tackled kanina. That when there is manipulation of the environment, when there is a manipulation of the environmental conditions that goes with your plants, that is cultural control. So the answer here is cultural control. Yeah. Removing, yeah. sanitation, using, purusha process. So you are upholding or you are uh, manipulating, you are changing the environment na hindi doon makakagrow ang mga peste sa iyong uh, farm. So that's it. Cultural control. Here. Which is the process of treating the soil treating the soil by applying heat before planting kill pathogens. So alin dito ang tingin natin treatment for soil. Diba? So treating the soil by applying heat before planting kill pathogens. So the answer for this is soil sterilization. When we sterilize the soil, we are also preventing yung ating mga pathogens from growing. Most of our pathogens, but not all, are sensitive to heat. They are sensitive to heat. So, kaya nga, di ba, ang ano natin kapag kumari, lilinisan yung mga kutsara, ang ilalagay, mainit na tubig. Uh, yung mga root crops nilalaga natin, di ba? Nilalaga natin yung kamoteng kahoy, yung mga ganun. Because they are galing sila sa baba, so probably maraming microorganisms din. So para maging edible sila, ilalaga natin heat. So that is a uh, more uh, technical term, soil sterilization. You can be confused here with heat treatment. Kasi, akala ko ba, uh, ano tayo, obvious yung mga ano, <laughs> diba? heat treatment. But heat treatment is not used in the context of crop protection. Heat treatment happens in the context of uh, crop science. Yung binisas natin in, anong tawag dito? Microbiology. Yung mga yan. Pero in the context of soil and crop protection, soil sterilization is the technical term for this. Cover cropping, of course, is sobrang layan na yan. Mulching is also malayo na rin. So ang possible lang na maging confusion here is heat treatment and soil sterilization. That is the reason why we are segregating the topics natin. We are, we are segregating the topics uh, per field para mas maging organized yung thoughts natin. Yeah. Okay. 
Next, which of the following is one of the four group of preventative measures? So preventative measures. Actually, this one is not only applicable for crop protection, but even for animal science, and I think even for fisheries, our prevention of mga diseases natin. So among these choices, iisa lang dyan ang preventative, which is quarantine. We've studied this as well in animal science. And I will be discussing animal science uh, in our fourth or fifth session. Yeah. So uh, burning is more of a, an action. Na, so it means er eradication, na to, elimination. Na. Medication is kapag nandun na yung, yung problem, ano yung kailangan mong gawin, i-medicate mo. Calling is an... Kaya siya pwede rin sa animal science kami kasi culling is a killing na the, ano, ba't ang konyo? Killing na ng mga hayop, ganon. Ayun. So, ang preventative lang dito is quarantine. Ayun, quarantine. Ayun yung ano dito, key term, preventative measure. Okay, next. Bilis ang oras. Okay. Ito. Which refers to the total elimination of weed species? So for this question, the, the, the key word is total elimination. And if you will look at the choices, the best and closest answer that can account for elimination is eradication. Elimination, eradication. They are almost synonyms, right? So, yeah. Okay, so next, number 56. Which of the following is a disadvantage of biopesticides? Biopesticides. So, A, they are more economical alternative. They have less dangerous impact on the environment and water quality. They take more extensive management and planning. Helpful insects and animals can go completely unaffected by their use. In questions like this, tignan nyo muna, i-classify nyo muna. Disadvantage pa ang hinahanap or advantage? So, ang hinahanap is disadvantage. More economical is more likely an advantage because they are more economical. So, advantage yun. Next, they have less dangerous impact. Less dangerous impact is also an advantage. Helpful insects and animals can go con completely unaffected by their use. So kapag walang epekto sa nasa surrounding na insects at animals, or ang tawag namin dyan sa agriculture ay non-target non organisms. And kapag wala siyang effect sa non-target organisms, it is also an advantage. Kasi yung pesticide na yun, dapat ay nasa, ang tinatarget lang niya is isang uh, organism. Ganun. So kung wala siya epekto, maganda yon, kasi hindi maapektuhan yung hindi naman natin target na organism. Thus, ang disadvantage niya is they take more extensive management and planning. One of the most common mistakes is kapag nakita ng more or less ganyan. Kapag ano yung less, ayun na yung sinasabi natin disadvantage. But we, all, we uh, need to finish the sentence. That is why it is very important kasi ang sabi ko nga dito, ang kalaban talaga is time pressure, di ba? So, ang mahalaga, mabasa nyo yung keywords. Huwag kayong magsettle sa more or less. Ay, to less. Less daw. O sige, B na yung sagot ko. Di ba? So, parang less dangerous pala. Di ba? <laughs> hindi, hindi, hindi siya natapos. So, mali na yung sagot niya doon. So, let us see they take more extensive management and plan. Ito porket may more ba? Ayun na yung tamang sagot. Diba? So, dapat basahin natin ang buo. More extensive management and planning. Which is really true in the case of biopesticides. Because biopesticides are more uh, anong tawag dito? More uh, and less strong. <laughs> Weaker. Ayun na lang. Weaker compared to chemical pesticides. Kasi ang chemical pesticides, they are concentrated. Concentrated yung mga yun. Ibig sabihin, andun yung active ingredient na mismo. Eh kapag biopesticides ang, ang gagamitin natin, kailangan wala tayong calculation yan ng 
ilang percent ng active ingredient. Mayroon kasi tayong tinatawag na active... Ay, mayroon tayong tinatawag na active ingredient. Ingredient. Sa mga pesticides or AI. So that is commonly uh, measured in percent. So ang mga active ingredient na yan, ayan yung kung gaano karami yung ganitong chemical para patayin yung ganito. Ganyan. So kapag chemical, kapag chemical control, mag-measure ka lang. Tapos spray mo na yun. Ganyan, ganyan. E kapag biopesticide, we, we do not have those in information. So kailangan mo pang i-manage. Okay, so gaano ka gaano karaming ganito ang dapat na gaano karaming for example organic herb nutrient yung yung ilalagay natin. 'Di ba? So kailangan din diyan ng planning. Na kailangan ba every two days merong ganun? Kailangan ba every one week merong ganun? Ayun yung mga things that uh, people on the field are managing and planning kapag gumagamit sila ng biopesticides. So ayun ang ang uh, ayun ang advantage ng chemical pesticides kasi meron ng ganito eh. So mas madali siyang gamitin pero marami rin siyang disadvantage in the aspect of soil health. Ano bang epekto ng pesticide na yun sa soil health mo? Uh, possible na siguro kapag gamit ka ng gamit ng ganun Uh, humihina na yung nutrients sa soil mo. Or meron ding mga chemical pesticide na merong epekto sa mga non-target organism. Actually, even humans are not are non-target organism, di ba? So, may mga oras na kapag, kunwari, nag spray ka, yung mga tao sa paligid mo, yung mga community sa paligid mo, naaapektuhan sila. So, ayun. Isa yun sa mga negative effects ng chemical pesticides and there is also there is actually a case on this like this is one of our case studies na yung banana farmer sa Davao ayun so parang kasi ang naging issue doon is parang yung pesticide na pesticide or basta ano fume fumigant ganyan na i-spray doon sa farm is nakakaapekto na sa mga tao sa paligid nila So using pesticide is also a social issue then. So we have a lot of considerations in using pesticides on crop protection. Okay, so next. The following are aims of uh, integrated pest management except A, reduced and use of synthetic organic pesticide. B, ensure consumers a supply of high quality, safe, and economical foods and other agricultural products. C, grow crops that are environmental sound. Or letter D, grow crops that pose risk to human health. So the very obvious answer here is letter D, which is grow crops that pose risk to human health. We would not like that. <laughs> yeah, so grow crops that pose risk to human health. That is why a lot of technologies which, which are very controversial. So ito po, punta na tayo sa mga pa-social aspect na ng agriculture, which is also a thing that we have discussed entirely, uh, enormously in our university. Uh, we make sure that the crops that we are producing do not have risk on human health. And this is both a consideration of the scientific side and the social side. Meron ding social side ang agriculture. For example, in the issue of GMOs. We tackled this last week, GMOs, genetically modified organisms. Yes, it has been proven to produce better yield, to produce you know, better crops and everything. Sobrang effective niya and it does not have a uh, risk sa human health. Pero, we also need to consider the social side of it. The social side of it. Still, meron tayong mga tao, uh, meron tayong mga tao, we, we are entitled to our uh, own opinion. Ganyan. We are entitled to our own opinion. And, uh, 
a person needs to be knowledgeable sa kung ano yung kakainin niya. So, that is considering the social side of it. So, people always have the right to eat or not to eat genetically modified organisms. Ayan. So, it is a social aspect of that. And we need to respect that aspect. Ayan. Although, proven na siya scientifically, we still need to respect that, that aspect. So, yeah. And, kaya ko na-mention pala, kasi integrated pest management, meron din dyang biotechnological approach, which is what we do in developing varieties that are less resistant to some diseases. Ayan. Okay, so number 58, which weed control method is done by pooling or weeding or hoeing and tillage? So alin sa mga ito? Biological, chemical, cultural, or physical? So the answer for this question is letter D, which is physical method. From the term itself, pooling, weeding, hoeing, or tillage. So yung mga yan, physical control method yung mga yan. Kapag tinatanggal mo na. You are doing it physically, not mechanically, not biologically, not chemically. You are doing it physically. Okay? Which method of control uses natural enemies or predator of pests? Okay, so for this question, the answer is, as what we've tackled then a while back, biological method. Kasi andyan na yung natural enemies, andyan na yung predator of pests. So this is no longer... A chemical, physical, or cultural uh, application or control. Ayan. So, biological na siya. Kasi meron na involved na other living entities. Next. Which method of control uses crop rotation, relay cropping, uh, cover cropping, kurang letter O, cover cropping, and green manure? So, again, Kung makikita natin, if we will analyze and we have uh, considered other, may rotation, relay cropping, cover cropping, green manuring, these are all, again, for the end time, manipulation of the environment. So thus, it falls under cultural method. It falls under cultural method. Okay. Number 61. Okay. Which insecticides are formulated by extracting toxic compounds from plants that have pesticidal properties? So, Environmental insecticides, botanical insecticides, biological insecticides, garlic paste. So here we are talking about insecticides. So I, this is a general question. It's wanting a general answer. So the keyword that in dito is plant. Extracting toxic compounds from plants that have pesticidal properties. So plant, botany. Botanical insecticide. The answer is botanical insecticide. So always look for keywords, most especially sa mga ano, kapag hindi natin alam. Kasi there are things that we can review. There are things that are needed to be reviewed. Like for example, kailangan mong alamin na, ah, ito technical to. Is, 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 this, is this a technical term? And kapag sobrang technical ng term, kailangan talaga siya reviewin. Pero there are also items, and I, I'll say a lot of items, that are that can be answered using context clues and that is a skill that we need to develop uh, for examinations okay. so plant botany botanical insecticides look at those connections okay number 62 which organic insecticide is prepared with crushed or ground cloves mixed in a cup of water a, malung, uh, hot pepper based, B, malungay based, C, clover based, or letter D, garlic based. The question that you, that you must be uh, asking to yourself right now is alin sa mga ito ang merong cloves? 
alin sa, it, sa mga ito ang may clothes. And this goes with our basic knowledge of these crops. May cloves ba ang hot pepper? May cloves ba ang malunggay? May cloves ba ang clover? Clover is actually, ano lang dyan, pananggulo lang yan. Or ang garlic. And I hope that you already answered letter D, which is garlic-based. Because sa lahat ng choices na yan, garlic lang ang may cloves. Ayun. Okay, so next, number 63. Which agricultural product is a natural all-purpose insecticide? All-purpose insecticide. So A, garlic, B, malunggay, C, hot pepper, or letter D, onion. If you have already, I think, no, naka, once in your life, nakagawa na kayo na ganito, ng organic pesticide. I, I, I actually have, <laughs> nag-promote, I actually have a video about this sa aking YouTube channel. Organic, oriental herb, nutrient, yung mga yan. So, the answer here is all-purpose hot pepper. Hot pepper. Dahil nga meron siyang capsaicin, wow, nag-ano ng ano, ano ba yung spelling ko? Basta ganyan, capsaicin or capsicum, capsaicin. Okay, nag-ano pa ako ng spelling dito. Dahil meron siyang capsaicin, ayun yung active ingredient. Kaya siya har- harmful sa mga insects, pest, ganyan. Tayo pa nga lang, di ba? Kapag nakaamoy na tayo ng pepper, na hatching na tayo, kaya... Uh, sobrang sakit na sa kamay, sobrang habdi na. So that is the reason why it is an all-purpose insecticide. Okay, number 64, which organic farming cultural practices breaks the life cycle of insects and disease? So this is another form of cultural control. If you're Uh, taking notes of the things that we've, uh, we, we are talking about kanina pa. Yung cultural control, ito na yung crop rotation, relay cropping, mulching, green manuring, yung mga yan. Those are forms of cultural control of diseases. So here, they're asking, farming cultural practices breaks the life cycle. Ang tinatanong is, nagbe-break ng life cycle. I have also said this example kanina, na this is crop rotation. Kasi kapag kunwari, let's consider this situation. Okay. Uh, January to March, nagtanim ka ng isang plant, plant A. So sa bawat plant, meron niyang specific pests or diseases. So let's say sa plant A, sa January tsaka March, ah, uh, Three months yan na merong may sabi ko? Insect. Insect A. Disease A. Ayan. Plant A, insect A, disease A. Tapos, ito yung first cycle. Kunwari, annual crop to. Sabihin kaya yung harvest ng mas mag-pet na tayo. Then, April, nagtanim ka ng plant B. April to May, June. April to June. Plant B. Okay. During this time, March to April, ang mangyayari dyan, babalik ang insect A. At this is A. Pero, dahil hindi nila kilala si plant B, for example, sabihin natin ang plant A mo ay munggo. Yung munggo, meron siyang specific na mung bean rust. Mung bean rust. Tapos, kapag bumalik siya ng plant B, tas iba na yung halaman na nandun, parang hindi na siya welcome doon. Ganun ang istorya. Ay, ayun ang pas, ang, anong tawag dito? Ayun ang scenario sa crop rotation. Kapag bumalik sila, hindi na sila welcome doon kasi iba na yung host. 
hindi na nila kayang i-invest to. For example, magtanim ka ng corn, hindi naman mag-grow ang mang bean rust sa corn. Parang ganun, di ba? So, kaya yung smut. Yung smut, yung, yung kaninang trig na natin picture na parang may black na lumalabas-labas sa corn, hindi naman mag-grow yun sa mang bean kasi wala namang corn sa mang bean. Di ba? <laughs> Makes sense. Ayun. So it means, mapuputol yung life cycle ng testing. Iyon. That's why we do crop rotation. So, gano'n ang scenario sa crop rotation. Okay. Number 65. Catching or control pest using a decoy is... The answer is, decoy. The term, uh, the keyword dyan ay decoy. So she has somehow similar to traps. Thus, this is the answer. Catching by traps. Again, look for context clues. Okay, next. Which is growing two or more crops in alternating strips? This is a very simple question and a very obvious answer based on our choices. So the answer is strip intercropping. Crop rotation, as we've discussed kanina, yung principle na discuss ko, breaks the life cycle. Organic fertilization is fertilizing using compost or uh, any organic material, whereas composting is the act of making a compost, wherein it is mixed using plants or any organic material that contains nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So yeah. Strip intercropping. Okay, so number six, seven. A fungus in plant, such as powdery mildew, that has no chlorophyll, depends on its host. Depends on its host, on his existence. This fungi is classified as what type of parasite? Depends on its host. Okay, so... We have here obligate, dependent, facultative, or suprafetic. I want you to be familiarized with these terms. Uh, kapag familiar kayo, there is no, uh, no such thing as dependent uh, organism. Dependent organism is term coined as obligate, obligate, Parasite. Obligate, ibig sabihin, dependent siya sa host. Kaya ito yung sagot. A. A ang answer dito. Ha? Dependent siya sa host niya. Facultative and saprophyte. Ito yan. Facultative, they can live even without a host. Kaya hindi lang mabuhay kahit wala silang host. Ang host pala ay kung saan tumutubo yung organism or yung damage. For example, meron kang yung sa corn kanina, tas merong smut, yung kulay black. Ang host doon is yung corn. So kapag sinabing obligate, yung host ay yung organism na yon ay hindi mababuhay kung wala yung host. Kasi doon siya kumukuha ng nutrient niya. Kapag sinabing facultative, mag- pwedeng mabuhay yung uh, disease o yung parasite kahit wala yung host. And sa prophetic, these are actually on another sphere of crop and crop protection. These are things that, uh, these are organisms that feeds on dead organic matter. This is more uh, related to soil. Yeah, yung term na But these are organisms that feed on dead organic matter. Number 68. Okay. Naulit na naman ito. So, insect pest that attack crops at the ground level is, again, ground level, cutworm. A possible confusion here is earthworm. Pero earthworm is not an insect pest. Cutworm is an insect pest. Okay, 
Which of the following organisms is not a microorganism? Again, kanina, we discussed ko to before we start that we need to study for uh, sa plant pathology, virus, fungi, and bacteria. At thus, ang hindi microorganism dito ay lice. Una -una sa lahat, when we say micro, organism, this cannot be seen by the naked eye, which means you cannot see this without the aid of any without the aid of any like microscope or uh, zooming in photography yung mga ganun. so kapag nakikita ng iyong naked eye hindi siya microorganism and lice you can see that thus it is not a microorganism okay Dito na papasok yung sinasabi ko kanina that we will be diving to the basics of pesticide management kung ano yung kailangan gamitin sa certain things. So here, mealybug is common among fruits, trees, and other commercial crops. The insect sucks juice and uh, fruit and foliage to control ano yung dapat i-spray. So mainly bug is an insect. Thus, it needs an insecticide. Later, we will be we will learn more about this other terms here. Pero ang um, malasayon is an insecticide. So kapag may lumabas na mga tanong, for example, what will you use to control mosquito? Ang mosquito ay, ay isang insect. So can you use malasayon? Yes, because it is an insecticide. So these are general topics that you need to know. Kasi ang dami ko nga nakita ng ganito sa mga last, mga previews na let. Ayan. 71, bacterial wilting of uh, young leaves and slight yellowing of old leaves can be controlled by the following except. Control. Again, young leaves, leaves, yellowing, ganyan. So we are looking for a control method that you can do immediately kapag nandun na siya. And among these this choices, kaya mo bang gawin ang, effect, ang cutting affected plants? Yes. Discarding and burning affected leaves? Yes, kaya mo gawin yan. Control. Seed treatment. Kapag nandun na yung leaves, it will, will it be helpful to still do seed treatment? No. So this is the answer. That's exact. Yung proper fertilization, actually yellowing of leaves, bacterial will, it can be caused by improper fertilization. Thus, kailangan natin i-control yung paglalagay ng fertilizer. Kasi, ito, same principle with uh, somehow root rot. Ang fertilizer, kapag over, over fertilization, kapag over fertilization, ang possible na mangyari ay magkaroon ng soil and or mineral buildup. So kapag nagkaroon ng, kunwari, ito yung roots na naman. Let's go. Uh, roots ng dahon. Eh, ng dahon ng halaman. Yan. Kapag yung salt ay nag-build up dito, the tendency is mabablock rin niya. Mabablock ang nutrients tsaka water na umakyat dito. Ngayon, ang magiging epekto niyan ay dahil kulang sila ng nutrients, kulang sila ng water, magde-degrade ang kulay ng ating dahon. Magiging yellow. Sige, yellow. Ganitin natin. Magiging yellow. One of the reasons why is because 
Kunwari, na block na yung water dito. Hindi wala na umaakit na tubig kasi nga binlock na ng mga nutrients ng mga salt, salt and mineral. Magiyelo siya kasi hindi magpapatuloy ang photosynthesis. Remember kanina sa pinakaunang item, dinisplay ko ang formula ng photosynthesis. Uh, carb, carbohydrates, plus oxygen. So, a requirement in photosynthesis is the presence of water. So, kung walang water, naakit dito, hindi magproduce to. And this is responsible then sa pag-power ng food na magpapag-green sa halaman. So, kaya nagiging yellow siya. And eventually, they will dry and magiging brown. Tapos mamaya, mag-wilt na yung buong halaman. Ngayon yung karaniwang epekto ng over-fertilization. Thus, we need proper fertilization to prevent slight yellowing of old leaves. Bacterial wilting is cause naman nitong mga to. Ay, ang pwede gawin dito ay sarong dalawa. Ayan. Okay. Number 72. Lepidopteran insects are similar to moths and butterflies. These can be controlled by using insecticides such as, kanina, actually, na naitakal natin to. Alin sa mga ito ang insecticides? That is malathion. Malathion ang ano, insecticide. Okay. Number 73, bacterial leaf spot caused by bacteria Santomonas vesicatoria and can be controlled by the following except. Okay, so dito, bacterial leaf spot yung, yung tinatanong. So bacterial leaf spot is caused, sabi nga dyan, by bacteria. Which of the following ang hindi nagtatakal? Sa bacteria. The answer is weed control. Kasi it is tackling weeds. Trap rotation, pwede, yung, pwede niya i-control ang bacterial leaf spot. Kasi nga, yung kanilang concept na sinabi ko, na kapag kunwari, merong bagong plant, tapos bumalik yung bacteria or yung disease, hindi siya makakagrow doon. Kasi iba na yung plant. Parang, ha? Iba na yung bahay ko. Ganda na yung sasabihin niya. So, Ano tawag dito? Makakakontrol yung crop rotation. Proper watering, sinabi ko rin kanina, na kapag sobrang moist ng environment, it will be a breeding ground for a lot of pests and diseases, fungi, bacteria, may mga yan. Even nematodes in your foliage. So, kailangan meron tayong proper watering. And seed treatment, bacterial uh, diseases can, be, uh, can actually be controlled sa seed pa lang. So kapag yung seed natin is fully ano na siya, resistant na siya sa diseases, hindi na siya magde-develop ng mga diseases pag lumaki siya. Ayan. Okay. Number 74, fruit fly in mango is a common oriental fly which is very destructive to mango fruits. This can be controlled by observing cleanliness and using chemicals like, so ano yung, chem ano yung chemicals na ano sa fruit fly? The answer here is azogrin. Is azogrin. Okay. Ang azogrin, ang azogrin ay karaniwang ginagamit sa mga, yan, sa mga fruit flies and insects and pests. Parang malathayan. Okay, last. Tapos i-discuss natin isa-isa yung mga nasa choices. So, number 75. Golden kohol is very destructive in the tropical region. Control this by means spraying with control this by spraying with the answer here is letter D, uh, metal dehyde which is letter B. Metal dehyde, which is letter B. Okay. Ito yung mga kinokontrol ng mga na-mention. 
Ang methyl dehyde mollusks, ano ba spelling ng mollusks? Basta yun. Ang methyl dehyde sa mollusks, ang proteomics ay sa fungi at bacteria. Ito actually, karaniwang ginagamit na fumigant. Ayan. Fumigant, insect, and nematodes. Entlordane for termites. Pyrethrin for insects. Pati malasang sa insects. Then. Ayan. So, that's it for the crop uh, protection na session. And that's So let's have a five-minute break because we will resume on ito. Ito yung mga ilan sa mga questions na na left out sa crop science last week. Okay, so let's have a five-minute break. And after that, let's talk about these 10 questions na naman to. And then we can go in now. All right, let's go.
Ayan, so let's continue. Okay, so number 51, it is considered as the, man, the mature or ripened ovary. So this is this is this might sound grandiose, pero ano lang to? Ang answer dito is fruit. Yeah. Uh, context clue, mature, ripened ovary, ripened. Alin lang dito yung nararipe, which is fruit. Okay. Next, number 52, the, a process of covering the land surface with plant residue, with plant residue, plastic, or other materials to hold loss of moisture through evaporation. So we have tackled this that in the last session, the answer for this one is mulching. Mulching, mulching is the ano, ito yung pwedeng ano, straw, ano yung hay? Basta yung straw, gano, or straw, rice straw, gano, basta yun. Or pwede rin mga dahon, dried leaves, ganyan. Ayan. Or plastic, mulching, mulching din yung mga yan. So ito, ginagawa to not only to uh, hold loss of moisture through evaporation, but also to prevent weeds from growing. Kasi ang kailangan din ng weeds para mag-grow is sunlight. Same. Same with, with halaman. So kapag walang uh, kapag walang walang sunlight na pumapasok doon hindi tutubo yung mga weeds natin. So that's uh, the purpose of mulching. Okay, number 53, this method of propagation which involves the use of vegetative parts of a plant. Con context clue, once again, vegetative. So the answer is asexual. Okay, so ang cutting is an example of asexual propagation. Vegetative is not a technical term for this. Sexual is production of plants from seeds. Another type of asexual propagation by runners, tubers, uh, cutting, marketing, Uh, grafting, budding, yeah, no mind. Rearrange. Yeah, so those are types of. Ito lang pala. Yeah, ayan yung types now. Asexual reproduction. Next. Ito. Seeds produced by seed growers, breeders, or individuals without approval from the National Seed Industry Council. So, so we have without approval. Without approval. So the term for this is natural seed, which is good seed. Kapag breeder seeds, ibig sabihin ito ay in-approve na. in na ng uh, NSIC. Same through with certified seeds. Ito ay develop na ng breeder seeds. Okay. Next, ito. 
a method of temporarily storing the harvested crops in stocks or piles. So if you will look at our choices, the best answer here is piling. Temporarily storing holding is transportation. Threshing is uh, pag, ano, pag separate na husk sa mismo rice. Tapos bagging naman is pag bag na ng rice dun sa saka. Ilalagay sa saka. So these are uh, processes na nangyayari after harvest ng rice. 56. The process of providing crops, the condition that will make them free of weeds, pest, and disease. So this is a general general question that wants a general answer. Makes them free of weeds, pests, and diseases. The answer is crop protection. Which is our topic for today. Crop protection. Kasi na mention yung weeds, pests, and diseases. Next. All right. This is an important part of an integrated rural development that provides durable, comfortable, and healthy homes with clean water, sanitation facilities, and community infrastructure. So, kung titignan natin yung mga choices, irrigation and drainage, farm machinery, agriculture, farm structure. Uh, irrigation and drainage is a very uh, specific that only deals with water and even soil resources. Farm machinery is another specific a term that deals with the mechanization of a farm. Ano yung mga implements at saka mga tools na ginagamit sa isang farm. Agriculture is a very broad term. Very broad term. And ang question natin is important part of an integrated rural development. So the answer for this is that we see which is farm structure. So the farm structure dictates kung ang isang lugar ba, ang, ang isang farm is comfortable, is comfort, comfortable, healthy, na meron tong mga to. So, take note of that. Na, hindi dapat too specific or too broad ang mga answers sa mga ganitong questions. Okay, here. Seeds of many fruits and plantation crops cannot withstand drying that cannot withstand drying and should not be permitted to dry out before planting. These seeds are called the answer for this I letter D which is recalcitrant. So here is the difference between orthodox and recalcitrant seeds. Kapag sarabing orthodox, so it can be dried. It can survive even with low moisture. Moisture. Ito yung mga kayang i-ano, kayang i ilagay sa seeds, sa seed packets. For example, yan, mung bean rice. They can survive. Kasi sila mismo, pwede silang i-dry. Yan yan. Even okra yung mga yan. Kapag recalcitrant, ito yung mga maraming moisture content. For example, mango, rambutan. Di ba yung seed ng mango sobrang laki? So, yun, kailangan niya ng moisture in, in order to survive. Same true with rambutan. Yung mga yan, ayan yung uh, hindi, hindi sila pwedeng i-dry kasi kapag nag-dry sila, hindi na sila tutubo. Ayan. So, ang moisture content ng orthodox is low. Ang recalcitrant is relatively high. Now, here. Number, ano, which of the following plants does not have tendrils? Bitter gourd, mung bean, grapes, or the passion fruit? The answer for this ay mung bean. Ang tendrils ay ito. 
this structure is called ten tendrils. Yung umiikot-ikot. Yeah. So, lahat ng, halos lahat ng mga vining na mga halaman ay may ganun. An example of that, this is bitter gold. Ang palaya, yung grapes meron din. And even passion fruit. Ang mung bean, ang growth ng mung bean ay hindi siya vine. Para siyang ganito. Ayan. Tapos na ganito, may tatlong ganun. Ayan, parang ganito ang growth ng mung bean. Tapos, kapag, ayun, kung ano marami pang dahon dito, dito tutubo yung pods. Black pods. Ayan. So, wala silang tendrils, hindi sila nagpo-form ng ganitong structure. Alright. And lastly, ayan. Which of the following is not a beverage crop? So, titignan mo yung choices. Alin dyan ang hindi natin umiinom? Uh, obviously, pepper. Hindi siya isang beverage crop because they are consumed specifically for condiments. So, meron tayong mga tinatawag na condiment crops. So, pepper. Yung katulad ng kalamansi, pepper, yung mga yan. Or spices. Pepper. Ang coffee, cacao, and tea, they are all beverage crop. So, another tip sa crop science is to know the major anong tawag doon? Function and the function. Major use, utilization of every crop. Meron tayong oil crops, latex crops, um, manure, manure crops pwede rin. Example sa tayo, legumes, fruits, vegetables, alin yung mga ganito. Or the rubber, ay, fiber crops. Fiber crops, example, abaka, banana. Yan. So, know the different uses ng bawat crops. Kasi there could be questions like this. Ayun. So, I think that's all for this session. Uh, if you, do you have any questions? Yung mga nandito pa sa, ano, sa Zoom meeting, if you have any questions, you can just uh, chat it dito sa ating chat box. Or we can also talk sa GC. If, ano. But if you do not have any question pa, ayan, we can ano. Ah, okay, wait lang. Mayroon akong example dito. May nag-ask, wait lang. Okay, so may nag-ask, ano daw yung cloves? So, this is a garlic. Kita ba? Wow. Garlic. Ang bawat ito, it's a clove. Ang bawat ano ng garlic. This is a clove. Yan. Bawat isa clove yan. Clove ang tawag dito. Kaya garlic yung ano dyan. Yun namang sibuyas, it is considered as a bulb. So ito, clove. Ang tawag naman sa sibuyas, bulb. Kapag onion, a bulb, garlic, clove. Ayan. Do you have any other questions or clarifications? Ay. Kumuha pa talaga ako ng bawang, no? <laughs> Yun. If there are none, I will stop the recording and see you sa next session. I think the next session will be on... Wait now. August na to, ito. Ito sa diretso na yun. August 16. Yes, August 16, 18, 23, 25, 30, and 1. Plus 13, plus 15. Ayun. So during those sessions, we will uh, 
talk more about the integration ng mga concepts. We will deal more with the fisheries, yan, sa animal science, sa mga yan. And we can share our experiences as well when when uh, we okay, so, feel the experiences natin, ganyan. So, yan. So, thank you very much sa ating lahat. And I hope that you will have a wonderful evening. Thank you for listening na kahit ito tayo, diretso tayo, four hours tayo na nag-ano, na nag-discuss, ganyan. So, I hope na you learned something from today in terms of crop protection. So, yeah, I will stop the recording na. Thank you very much.